powered from the Perdomo Cigar Studios on the Black Stage in Indian Trail, North Carolina, and broadcasting from the Drew Estate Studios in California. It's episode 168 of the Primetime Show. Tonight, we talk AJ Fernandez cigars with the one and only Omar Fernandez as our special guest. And as always, the Primetime Show is sponsored by Saga Cigars. De Los Reyes Cigars introduced another chapter of the saga, the Saga Celez. Celez is a Spanish word that means leisure after work in the spirit of the standing ideal of owning your own journey and making your own saga. Saga Celez is the perfect companion to enrich those moments of choice, making them truly yours. The Saga Celez carries a brand of Criollo Olor and Piloto Cubano wrapped in a selected Ecuador-shaped Claro wrapper that generously delivers with elegance a surprisingly rich and balanced smoke. Available in three sizes at affordable price, ask for retail for Saga Celez. And by Perdomo Cigars, awarded Nicaraguan Cigar of the Year in 2014 by Cigar Journal, the Perdomo 20th Anniversary brand has consistently earned the highest scores in the industry and is the top seller in humidors around the world. The Perdomo 20th Anniversary blend requires tobaccos that have been carefully hand-selected and are well-aged for a minimum of eight years. The Perdomo 20th Anniversary is open in three distinct wrappers, a smooth, creamy, Ecuadorian Connecticut, a rich, earthy, Cuban seed, Nicaraguan sun-grown, and a dark, oily, Cuban seed, Nicaraguan Maduro. Combining these beautifully bourbon barrel aged wrappers with thick, high-priming binder and filler tobaccos gives each blend a balanced complexity with layers of rich flavors and smooth, elegant aromas. Perdomo Cigars is a family-owned and operated company headquartered in Miami, Florida with manufacturing and agricultural facilities in Esteli, Nicaragua. Perdomo's highly acclaimed cigar brands include the Perdomo Estate Selection Vintage, Perdomo Double Age 12-Year Vintage, Perdomo 20th Anniversary, Perdomo Reserve 10th Anniversary, Perdomo Abano Bourbon Barrelage, Perdomo Lot 23, and many more. For great tasting notes and pairing information, check out the new Perdomo website at www.perdomocigars.com. And by A.J. Fernandez Cigars. A.J. Fernandez's New World brand is named in the honor of the discovery of tobacco by Christopher Columbus's expedition in 1492. Fernandez collaborated with his father Ishmael on the cigar, which is comprised of a wrapper from Nicaragua that covers binder from the Jalapa Valley and a filler blend of Ometepe, Condega, and Esteli tobaccos. The core line debuted in 2014, which was followed by the New World Connecticut, the New World Puro Especial, and the New World Cameroon. All four blends are able to captivate the palate of any cigar smoker. If you're beginning to discover the world of fine premium handmade cigars, the New World Connecticut is for you. If you're into the rich full body blends, Pearl Especial is for you. And finally, if you're into complex flavors, the New World Cameroon is for you. And if you're into robust and earthy flavors with notes of espresso, the New World Oscuro is definitely for you. Visit www.ajfcigar.com to learn more. And finally, by Drew Estate, check out and download the Drew Diplomat app for your mobile device. Keep up with everything going on, Drew Estate. Experience the subculture that is the rebirth of cigars. It's available on iTunes and Google Play. For more information, check out www.drewdiplomat.com. And as always, all the live streaming for the Primetime Network of Shows, as well as the Primetime Shows California Studios, are sponsored exclusively by Drew Estate. Welcome, everybody. This is Primetime Episode 116. 116? No, 168. I'm going back to the best. 168. This is Will Cooper. I am on the black stage here in the Perdomo Cigar Studios, joined cross country by my friend and colleague, Mr. Aaron Loomis. How you doing tonight, Will? Pretty good. We are. This is, I guess, our last show for 2020, um, and it's we're going to head into a fifth, I guess, fifth year next year, calendar year of doing this, and I, I'm just amazed. Like where, how yeah, long? It seems like a very long time. It seems like a very long time, <laughs> and it doesn't in a lot of ways. Um, this yeah. year has been long because we went so many weeks um, with shows. I mean, we didn't have breaks yeah. for the trade show and travel and vacation. We had that one week off Thanksgiving. We're going to have two weeks off um, because I don't think we're going to – I didn't plan on working Christmas – even New Year's Eve, this year. New Year's Eve, yeah, no, yeah. So I think no. we're gonna we're gonna have a little break, and then we'll, we'll we're gonna kick things off next year. Our whole January schedule is already settled. So, it, it yeah, it went it went really fast here. Um, and it's hard to believe it's December, and uh, you know, we'll be in Christmas in eight days. So, yeah, we're hitting cigar of the year season. So, mm -hmm. good time. It, it is. I started to see some of the things start to roll out now a little more. Uh, and I know we're gonna get into probably we'll touch on that in the last segment for sure because today yeah. was your article um which we're gonna hit the uh when a 90 is not a 90 uh three years later um and uh i have a lot to say on that one this year because i said there was a lot of things i Good. saw in that article that were like okay um kind of i'm seeing some trends here happen so yeah. Yeah. so i think it was a good job on that um no, no problem but uh without further ado um I want to welcome in our special guest tonight. Um, he's from AJ Fernandez Cigars. Uh, he's the director of operations and really pleased to have him. He is Mr. Omar Fernandez. Omar, welcome to primetime. 
Hey, Will. Hey, everybody. Glad to be here tonight. Thanks for having me. No, honored to have you. Um, and uh, like I said, it's great. We haven't had AJ Fernandez cigars except on the, on the on the trade show thing we did over the summer. So it's really great. We're going to get to spend an evening talking AJ Fernandez cigars. And uh, so, you know, thank you for making the time and thanks for all the support we've gotten as well. Absolutely. It's a, it's an honor to be on here finally and uh, glad to be uh, supporting you and being on here and uh, seeing all the great people that are logging in and Really enjoy the show every week, weekend without. This year, definitely, you've you've hammered it. You've been busy. Yeah, yeah it's it's you know I don't it we've been busy. Um, you know you hate to say with, with this kind of year, you know it's kind of a strange year to say you had a good year. Um, but all I can say is we tried to make uh lemonade out of lemons. I mean that's all, that's all I could say with that. That's all you got to do sometimes. Just uh, step up and uh, handle it. Yeah, so that's that's really really good there. But uh, Omar, we want you know we definitely um we're glad to have you. Uh, I'm gonna be lighting up the uh, the Puro Special um, momentarily, so uh, I'm looking forward to smoking this one again. Aaron, what are you lighting up tonight? Uh, Dias de Gloria. Nice, nice. Sure. I see that. There you go. Awesome, awesome. So um, we're we're excited to talk about it. But Omar, we we always like to start the show off uh, with, with a guest who's on for the first time. Um, what was your first experience having a cigar? Like, just kind of, how did you start? What was, do you remember that first experience, what it was like? I do. Um, it, it was somewhere where no, hardly anybody in my family smoked cigars. I had an uncle, um, who smoked cigars and, um, actually he was, um, every, I'd love going to his house on Sunday afternoons. His house was the place to be. And he constantly would be smoking cigars, drinking whiskey. I love the aroma in that house. I loved it. And uh, first time I, I, did, I was old enough to buy a cigar, that's uh, almost 30 years ago, went to a local shop and I still remember I picked up a Butera, Connecticut shade wrapper, uh, real creamy looking, uh, tried that. I had heard Michael Jordan had smoked it uh, after winning a championship uh, or something. And um, I said, it must be good, right? That's what I got to try. And I just started, you know, sampling the cigars. So that was my introduction. Uh, I loved it from the beginning. It's, uh, it's just a lifestyle that I, that I really enjoyed for a long time and um, couldn't imagine it any other way. But yeah, it was really my uncle um, who's just always had a cigar in his mouth constantly. Always good. Always, always a good thing. And you have the uncle who has that. Um had yeah. that you know uh it's kind of weird because like my my family was mostly cigarette smokers um so my grandfather smoked cigars but i was just a little too young to smoke cigars so yeah they're mostly I, i've had to hang out with the cigarette smokers you adjust <laughs> so, yeah. um but yeah. you 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 were but you were a regular cigar enthusiast um for a long time it sounds like yes yeah, so i was an enthusiast for a long time um and then after uh after college and uh, venturing and playing a little bit of uh, baseball, uh, I got involved. Uh, I was able to open up a factory here in Miami for a few years, and uh, that was my my start. That was the original cigar boom in the mid to late nineties. Interesting. So you were you had a it was just a, like a private factory you had in, in Cali Ocho. Was that was that what it was? Cali Ocho, right on Sixteenth Avenue and Southwest Eighth Street. Wow. Wow. Very nice. How long were you doing that for? Did that for a few years. And then, um, you know, it was a, it was a strange time. There was, it was very difficult to get any tobacco, um, anywhere. And I remember, uh, the only person that, uh, that really helped me out at that time was, uh, uh, I I used to go to El Credito at that time and uh, get a couple pounds of uh, Dominican filler and whatever I could bum off of him just to have some production. Mm -hmm. Cellophane, wow, I couldn't get cellophane anywhere. It was tough. So I did that right up until uh, early 2000s, about 04. Okay. And then I uh, ended up selling my brand to the uh, to my, my previous partner and, um, and moved on from there. 
Omar, were you actually were you were you doing the rolling and the blending there? What, what was kind of your? Were you did you have other folks do that? You know, I, I hear a lot about about blending nowadays. Back then, it was a matter of let's get some tobacco and <laughs> let's see if we can make something that you could at least smoke. Okay. That's your honest, man. <laughs> we need to bring that honesty back here. <laughs> yeah. So if you could blend with what was available back then and have something that you could actually smoke, then you were really doing something. You know, right. For 25 years, and um, man, things have changed. It, oh, it has. <laughs> Everyone's a master blender. <laughs> Everybody. I, I listen. I, I forgot who it was that I gave that that um, that title to the other day. I gave it to Abe from Smoke It. There you go, Abe. Abe, <laughs> he, Abe, Abe put together a blend. I'm telling you, he's downplaying it. You're going to hear about it. He's, he's the new master blend. I'm hearing about the guys at Smoke In have been telling me about this. I guess this it's coming. It's going to be one of his blends next year. But I haven't smoked it, but I've heard positive things about it. I know you mentioned it on the show with Abe a few weeks ago too. And I gave him a bunch of samples. It's a, it, I kept a couple for myself. I think I have one left, but nobody in his inner circle has even tried it. So I don't know. I don't know. They would tell. Yeah. I don't know if, uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know who smoked it or who didn't. I mean, they're just saying this, this is a great cigar. They would tell me. So I don't know who did unless they heard it from Abe or something or someone else. I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. Yeah. I mean, uh, when Abe likes a cigar, I actually take it very seriously because he's, he's a, you know, he smokes cigars, but, but he smokes a lot of cigarettes too. So, yeah. uh, um, but I notice certain cigars, he'll tell me, I really like that cigar. And those are few and far between. Yeah. When, when he says he likes it, I mean, yeah. you know, you, you, yeah. you got to try it. Right. Um, so you you sold you sold uh, you sold the the, the shop on, on Cala Elche. What did you do after that? Till you got to AJ. Um, I took a, I took a break. Um, got into a lot of different uh, businesses, uh, real estate, and and so on. And met AJ years after um, when I was uh, working with Angel, who had who was starting the uh, La Gran Llave brand. Mm -hmm. Michael Argenti was involved in that project around 2015 um, and just hooked up with AJ. We became good friends and always talked about doing something together. And the opportunity came about last year early on. And um, it's, uh, you know, we're off to the races since then. Yeah, so you're director of operations over at AJ Fernandez Cigars. What, what does that role entail? Uh, it's a lot of things, a lot of hats that I get, that I have to wear. You know, AJ, um, I think most people know this, that AJ is really hands-on in the farms and in the factory. And that's where his passion really is put on display. He loves being there. He's very, very, very hands-on. So in reality, here in the U.S., for him to put his faith and trust in me, to be able to put a team together, to handle the distribution of all of AJ's core brands, his portfolio, if you will, throughout the U.S. is a big responsibility. It's a big task because he's not here to oversee everything on a daily basis and whatnot. So he's put a lot of faith and trust in myself, in Frankie Santos, and uh, we put together a, a really good team. Uh, the sales team is second to none. Uh, those guys are they're amazing. And then the office staff, the warehouse here in Miami and Doral, uh, just a really, really, really good team, good atmosphere. Yeah, no, so, you know, AJ has a reputation for being demanding high performance. I mean, it, you know, we, we've seen that over the years. Um, but in the last year and a half, it seems like this team has been it's a more stability, I'll, I guess the best way to put it. Um, and it seems like you guys, like you said, off to the races, you guys are definitely in the race right now. I think that's, this has been a really good thing we've seen over the past year and a half. Yeah, he's, uh, you know, a lot of people have, have come to AJ to to have AJ blend cigars for him. And thank God he's got not only the inventory and the capacity, um, but he really, really enjoys doing that. He's um, he's a perfectionist, if you will, to the umph degree. Oh, yeah. He is a 
you, uh, Omar, you know, you've been down to the factory, I'm sure, many times there, and I just was, I saw how hands-on he was, like, just given the tour, because there were little yeah. things he was checking along the way, at each, and he gave the tour to us personally, but there were little things he was checking along the way, and, and it was, you could see it wasn't, like, if something wasn't good, he was letting people know it wasn't good. And if something was really good and he liked it, he was sharing it with everybody. It was, it was, it was actually one of the most interesting tours I've been on because I've never seen anyone take that type of a hands-on approach uh, going through the tour. You know, it's, it's uh, a lot of people have taken that tour. have told me that it's different um, than a lot of the other tours because it's not scripted. No, that's Getting exactly known. what I was going. Yeah. There's no script. It's all, Whatever he, whatever he's doing that day, he'll grab the group. They'll take off. They'll go and do things. Listen, I want to. He, I heard you went to the factory in Ocotal, right? Yes. So I heard there was a fire firefighting class that you were participating. In. Oh my goodness, that was that's a, that's become a legendary story. Yeah. Oh, so. <laughs> So literally what happened is we we uh, were on a tour with the Espinosa folks and Juan from Protocol Cigars was there, um, Eric from Dojo, and we go up to the Ocotel factory and, it, and it, the factory is on a it's on a beautiful you've been up there right it's a beautiful yeah. it's a beautiful layout um it, it's it, there's nice grounds there and everything and I don't know what happens but AJ says something to one of his guys there like um oh gringos like fire. Right. And the next thing, though, he, he, he sets this uh, he sets this. Um, I don't want to say like a brush, a brush on fire. Off. And this thing starts like catching much faster than he ever expected. Right. <laughs> uh, this video on I, I actually have to put the video on the coop page and I, I, this video of this. Right. Actually spreading. Um, I know a few guys went in to get the fire extinguishers and AJ's like, no, 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 those are expensive. Those are expensive. So he, he basically has like Eric Espinosa start and a couple of his guys start digging trenches to stop this fire and contain it. So they're literally out there uh, digging trenches. Eric, I, I'll never forget, Eric turns to AJ and he goes, those 601 cigars better fucking be good if I'm doing this. <laughs> and, and the funny is AJ, AJ he's also very – classy dresser right he's got shoes on he's got these really nice shoes on <laughs> the fur, yeah oh yeah these are the to the t's he's dressing down but no, yeah <laughs> but yeah so it was, it was classic but uh the fire w was put out um successfully so but the flames were going high and a lot of us were like this could hit some of the trees we were actually getting concerned about that so yeah i, I heard about it um I got some pictures texted to me, text to me, and uh, some of them were photoshopped. There was like a Godzilla fire breather. It was pretty cool. What I didn't put up there, I didn't put the picture of him lighting the brush on fire. And I was like, I'm not putting that one up there. I'm like, it just yeah. showed the fire. The evidence. <laughs> yeah, I'm like. <laughs> well, I need you to find that footage. If you've got, I heard you were you were just rolling with it. And the next, and I'm yeah, yeah. And the next thing I know is like I'm doing color commentary, right? I'm like right. I'm like I'm like the man on the spot with this thing as the as the flames are coming behind me. It was well that that speaks to the point that we were talking about earlier that there's nothing scripted on his tours. No, you know? and everybody that goes down there says, "Man, we were we were going to go see a, a field, one of his farms somewhere." And AJ said, hey, you guys are on the tour. Let's go. We're going to the other factory. And then, boom, it's, all right, change of plans because follow AJ, you know? Yeah. And he's more than happy to do it. You see him in his element. I mean, that's that's where he shines. Yeah. And that's, that, you know, the gold comes. Yeah. And when I went up there, um, like, first, AJ's got the big factory in Esteli, right? But let me take a step back. I've been to two AJ tours. I was on the first AJ tour where his operations were spread across the whole city, right? So yeah. he had these different, like, smaller locations, and he did different things from, like, pre-industry to fermentation to rolling. It was spread all around the city because it, the, he hadn't built the big factory yet. Then he built the big factory in Esteli, right? And yeah. it's, it's enormous. I mean, it's an enormous facility is all I'll tell people. 
And the fact that he had to go build a, get another factory up in Ocotel says a lot. And that other factory is about, I'd say it's about 50 miles north. Um, it's kind of in the, yeah. I don't want to say it's the middle of nowhere, but it's far out there. Yeah, it's called the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, everyone, we, and we got behind, you take the Pan American Highway, and you get behind that slow vehicle, and it makes like, oh, an, like an hour trip turn to like uh, two hours. Easy. Easy. Yeah. Not if he's driving, though. No, that's what I heard too. He was not driving. No. He, yeah, he was not driving. He was impatient that day. I can tell you that, though. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's uh, there's there's a uh, possibility of another third factory. Wow. Wow. You guys are already outgrowing because, like I said, they were just getting that one going when I saw it. Yeah, it was brand new. I think uh, uh, Eric's production, some of his stuff was was getting ramped up there, and you know, getting everything situated, and now they're they've outgrown it. That's amazing. That's amazing there. But, you know, we mentioned working for AJ, right? Um, yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's something, obviously, it's an adventure, I'd say, to say the least. You're working with one of the great blenders of all, you know, out there today. Um, tell me a little more what that's, what that's been like. You know, I don't, I don't ever try to understand what he does down there. Um, and the same thing with a lot of things that we do here and a lot of the distribution this business as you very well know here in the u.s relies extremely heavily on relationships and uh that's been my one of my main focuses is is to continue to nurture and build those relationships throughout the u.s with all the retailers of brick and mortars and tobacconists that are out there um bring in the right the right crew the right sales staff i mean we've got plenty of second to none you know some of them. You know Don Williams out yep. of Georgia. Yeah. Uh, Brad Snyder, who's up in Connecticut, New York, New Jersey. You got Johnny C in Philadelphia. There's another one. You know, how about Tim Wong? Oh yeah. There you go. Out of Cali. Yeah. Timmy Wong out there doing his thing. We got Hector out of Texas. Kyle is uh, is got Florida, and he was here years before, and and he's back again. And then we got Paul Height, who's hand in the Midwest. So, I mean, we've got amazing crew. And then Nick Goss up in the Northeast. All these guys do an amazing job for us. And they may, they're, they're the, the face of the company, if you will, out there meeting all these retailers. And it's been very difficult this year. Don't get me yeah. wrong. I mean, how many people, I, I mean, we had heard of Zoom and whatnot, but <laughs> it wasn't a daily thing. You know, we've had to adapt. Everyone's had to adapt. Yeah. Yeah. And well, the fact that the business has been able to continue to grow and, 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 and that people have been creative in, in finding new ways of, of doing business has been really, really eye-opening. You know, this lifestyle is not going to go away with COVID. No. You know? Oh, it's very true. In fact, you know, you mentioned Don, right? Don Williams. I know him for a long time. He's, he's our local rep. And at the beginning of the year, I see Don, I always see Don all the time. So at the beginning of the year, I was on KMA and I had a cap on. Don's like, hey, can you get me a KMA cap? I'm like, yeah, I got this cap for you. I'll, I'll give it to you the next time I've seen you. Well, I haven't seen him, right? Because it's not because he's, you know, it's just, I haven't been, it's not him, it's me. I haven't been going to the lounges lately. Since then, we've changed the cap. So now I'm going to have to get him the new cap on top of that, right? Because <laughs> <laughs> they've changed the cap design since then. <laughs> so How many caps you think Williams owns? Quite a few. Let's see if I don't know if he wears here. them. I never see him wear them, you know, because he's always dressed to the tees. Don, like Don's, like one of the classiest dressers I know too. But I, I, I have seen him on the, I guess, golf, golfing or whatever. I've seen maybe something in the cap, but otherwise, that's it. He collects them, so yeah. No, that I could be a good. That could be a good trivia question. I'd love to see it in the comments. That's good. How many caps? Yeah, has he, has he had? But yeah, um, like I said, I have. I, I, I have. That was a hint. I think that was a hint. Coop. What? Oh, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> okay. That's a teaser. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's a good one. Uh, but yeah, and like I said, um, I have your cap on. It's I haven't forgotten about it. <laughs> it's 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 sitting. It's uh you know it's 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 in great condition. But I have to get you the new cap as well now. I'm uh, sure he hasn't forgotten either. Yeah no, <laughs> no. So that's that's good. Yeah. So you just, now, AJ. You know a lot of folks know AJ. You know AJ's came up originally through the catalog ranks. 
as far as you know, he, he built he, he built some very strong brands for the catalogs. And I remember when he when he kind of went brick and mortar, it was around 2010 with San Latano. Do you first of all, do you have responsibility for the catalog piece or you strictly handle the brick and mortar piece? So we handle the catalog piece for his portfolio. Right. All his portfolio lines. The, the brands that he makes for catalogs and any other private labels, any other collaborations that he does, that's handled directly from the factory. And I don't, you know, that's, that's a whole other world. That's, that's, that's a big part of the business. Uh, yes, he, he had his start with the catalog. He had to start with Rocky Patel. Um, and when he decided to come out with his own brand to honor his hometown um, and bring out San Lotano line, uh, it was a it was a huge success at that time, and he wanted to finally make something that was his interpretation. It's what he wanted to put out, you know. Instead of other people telling him, "I'm looking for this, I'm looking for that," he put out what he what he had in his mind. Yeah, I I remember when he came to the trade show in 2010 with San Latano, um, mm -hmm. and. Oh, especially the two blends that I think blew a lot of us away with a Habano and, and that Connecticut, which that Connecticut was one of those earlier Connecticut's that had some firepower to it. Like, uh, and I remember it was just, I hadn't had a Connecticut like that. And the only other one I could think of was like the 601 black was in that type of category. But I remember that Connecticut and it just, like I said, it, it, it wowed a lot of us at the trade show that year. Those, and the Missouri came out that year, too. So the, San Latano was a nice, nice opening that year. Yeah, and it's, um, and it's still holding strong. That Connecticut from San Latano, um, it's, it's something that we've been telling people for years. You know, it's, it pops. It pops. Yeah. It also, but it yeah, was so it, you know, that was a good start for, for AJ with his own brands with San Lotano and, um, and then the oval came out um, and he kept, uh, you know, dabbling in, in other new brands. He had the Mayimbe, he had the, uh, the Pinolero yep. and then New World. <laughs> yeah. I remember he gave me the Pinolero on the factory tour I was on in 2012. And I, I love wow. that cigar. It, it, so I'm glad it came. It's back as an event cigar, right? It's back as an event cigar. It's very limited. Um, but stay tuned because we might be doing more with that. It's yeah. There you go. Because I, I really, like I said, I remember that cigar. It was just so different than anything he ever did before. Um, yeah. It was just, it was, uh, it was really good. I remember, like, I, I actually, he let me review that, right? When Unbanded. Um, and I remember, like, people were calling me, like, like, how did you get? Your, I think it was a couple of reps were calling me. Like, how did you get your hands on it? Well, AJ gave me a few at the factory. So, uh, yeah, no, I love the I love the Pinolero as well. Um, San Latano really, but San Latano was, I think, that first brand that, that he had. Um, oh, yeah. There, were, there were a couple of other ones that were in there that I want to talk about. Is the Bull was another one that? Yeah. I mean, the Bull's still around today, right? Absolutely. The packaging has changed. And, yeah. And, but it, it's definitely one of my, my, mine and my favorites in the rotation. Yeah. Yeah. And I do really love how the repackaging of San Latano, uh, I mean, it kind of went to the next level a few years ago when, when the new artwork came out on that. And uh, you guys knocked it out of the park, I think, with, with that. I just, I love the look at, look at that. The bands really became like classic looking bands there. Yeah, stay tuned for more on that. So <laughs> yeah, but it was interesting because I thought the old bands looked a little catalogish to me. That was kind of not that they were bad, but they kind of looked like a catalog cigar. But when the new bands came on, I'm like, this looks like the premium cigar that's under that band that that I knew. I like the texture that the old band had. I did. Yeah. I did like it had that matte 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 finish on yes. that. Yeah. Yeah. No, it wasn't the boxes. The boxes grew on me. The boxes were heavier than sin. Yeah. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah. That's why there's a wood shortage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the the one thing, but San Latano a couple of years ago, it got a um it got a kind of a boost or kind of got a little jump start where it was this unique project. It's it's the uh, project he did with Hochi 
the Santa Town Dominicana. And that was why did AJ decide to do that project? You know, I, I don't know how that exactly happened. I know he had a trip to visit Ho Chi in Dominican Republic. And I guess from what I understand, one thing led to another. They started talking and AJ said, hey, let's do something. I'll send you some tobacco. And, you know, and so that happened. He took another trip. They started making samples. I remember he would fly to Miami and I had tried some at the time, gave him my opinion, which you know, sometimes means I, if I agree with him, that means I know how to smoke cigars. Right. <laughs> I don't agree and I don't know how to smoke. So, uh, and that happens to everybody. Uh, it's hilarious. But um, I remember trying, I'm like, you know, this doesn't have the distinct Dominican tobacco flavor. No. It doesn't taste like a Nicaraguan cigar. It doesn't taste Honduran. It's not Cuban. What in the world do we have here? We have something new. And uh, it's, it's really, really done well. The packaging was beautiful. It matched the, the vibe. Uh, it's got both their names on her, AJ and Hochi on there. And it's, it's very well received because I, I truly believe there's nothing out there like it. Well, you know, that word collaboration, we hear it thrown around like master blender. Oh yeah. Um, so, but that was the first in a long time that we saw two people who are considered master blenders they own farms they own factories and they came together and did that and i think that was something we, we don't see a lot of of those types of collaborations which is why i thought it was something really special yeah you don't you don't see you don't see many people go to uh, aj's factory and uh start putting their hands on tobacco and telling him how to how to blend or or what proportions or what priming to use um, but with him coming together with Hochi, they speak the same language and, um, and they both have great tobacco. And when you unite those two, you know, you, you, you expect something really good. Uh, I had high expectations, um, which sometimes is not good because maybe you feel like it, it should have been more. Right. Yeah. And I've been like before, but, but with that project, I think they really hit it out of the park. How, how does it do, do with the rest of the San Latino portfolio? Has it become like, because it, it seemed like it for a while it really did re-energize the, the, the label when that came yeah, out. It's right up there. It's right up there. And I think that 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 new blend along with with the repackaging of San Latino, now people get to revisit it again and say, well, you know, I haven't had that in a while. Let me try that cigar. And it's become part of a lot of people's rotation uh, because the cigar is still the same blend. Right. Now, logistically, right, you handle operations in the U.S., so you're kind of dealing with the stuff coming in. Those come directly from Ho Chi's factory, correct? So you kind of – they don't go to Nicaragua first. They go into Ho Chi – they come into Miami directly? They come from the Dominican Republic straight to us here in Miami. Okay. okay. Uh, as a matter of fact, we're expecting a big shipment, so I hope Ho Chi's watching. <laughs> now, how does AJ like – AJ, like I said, we were talking about him being hands-on. But you know, obviously, the production's going on in the DR right now. It, 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 it probably just says a lot of the, the trust he has in Hochi to kind of be a steward of, of, of that, that project there. I, it's, I, find, I think there'd be few people that AJ would have that type of trust in. Yeah. And Hochi is one of them, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, he, tobacco, whatever tobacco is, is going in that blend that AJ grows in Nicaragua and sends it to Hochi, and Hochi puts his stuff in there. I mean, AJ trusts him to do that. And yeah. do it very well. No, it, de- it definitely it definitely is. It's like I said, it's a unique cigar. It's it's a bolder cigar than I was expecting too when I smoked it. Yeah. It's got some boldness to it. Yeah, it does, and but it's not overpowering. No, I and agree. I can't, there's nothing distinct there that that I could draw. If I if you blindfolded me, and by the way, we do that quite often to people that visit our offices, blindfold them and have them really try a cigar that they don't have no clue what they're smoking. That's one that just throws everybody off every single time. Yeah. With San Latino, that was like the first, I'd say, big, big label that AJ had in the portfolio. I remember 2000, we go to 2014. That's when the New World, uh, the original comes out. And that thing just becomes a monster success. Um, I mean, I could tell you, Omar, my son worked retail for about two and a half years, I want to say. And, 
you know, they're an AJ shop and when they kind of needed to get restocked and most of the time it, they had to get, re, it was the guy who was doing the ordering was not the guy sometimes restocking it. I mean, I'm saying he was, there was another guy restocking and sometimes they didn't have new world. My son would always say the cigars that people come in and ask for new world, new world, new world. I mean, it was like when they didn't have that stock, it was like, well, when's it coming in? Where can I get it? Um, did new world almost kind of like, do you think it hurt San Latino or, or kind of complimented it at that time? Because it seemed like New World just kind of took over in 2014. Yeah, I mean, 2014, it gets launched. It does it has immediate success. Widely accepted. Cigar of the Year from Cigar Journal 2014. That's right. And I really think it complements it. I really do. It's, 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 it's definitely has its place in AJ's portfolio. In his stable of cigars that has its place and it stands on its own. Um, it, ha it has been our, our, our number one brand. Uh, and we will continue to grow it and expand it and nurture it because uh, that is our workhorse. No, I, 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 you know, I can't say enough about it. And it's just, um, you know, I, I just noticed this year, it was, it started out as a box press line, but this year you added the Redondo, which was originally a TAA release. And the Redondo, That's now right. you have a round offering in there. Yeah, so we did the, the Redondo last year as a, um, as a TAA exclusive. And I think we limited it to 1,000 boxes, if I'm not mistaken. My God, I don't even know how many calls we got from non-TAA stores. Can we get that? Can we get that? Can we? I'm like, no, we can't. Um, we run out. People still want it. A, a year goes by. People are still asking for it. So... You know, Frankie and I approached AJ and said, hey, can you just make this non t Let's just bring it in and add it to the portfolio. Because as you well know, and we read, I read it online and I run into a lot of people and say, I won't touch a box press cigar. Yeah. You know, I'm an opportunity, any shape I'll smoke it. But yeah. a lot of people won't touch a, a box press cigar. So now you, you have the New World Toro in a box pressed original configuration and in the Redondo, which means round. Um, as well. So you have the best of both worlds there. There's no, there's no reason why someone wouldn't try it. And by the way, one of the, one of the successes of new world at the time was the price point. AJ has always been very price conscious. Right. And he, he just wants everyone to be able to try and smoke his cigars. And he feels that there's something in, in his portfolio that'll be satisfactory to everyone on this planet, you know? Yeah, I mean, and New World even expanded, and there's a lot of, we just talked about it in the ad, every, as we talk about in the ad every week, there's a lot of different offerings in that New World thing. I remember when the Connecticut shortly came out afterwards, he goes and puts that U.S. Connecticut, and I was, you know, when I heard about it, I'm wondering, is this just going to be another, is this going to be another bold Connecticut? It's kind of the opposite. He goes and makes a more traditional Connecticut, very approachable cigar for a lot of people with that. Very approachable, very flavorful, extremely well balanced, and um, right under that beautiful USA Connecticut is uh, San Andres Mexican binder. Yeah. So it's a lot of flavor. A lot yeah. Of no. Flavor. Yeah. The back back to the original New World. A lot of those cigars are fifty five ring gauge. Is there anything significant about that fifty five ring gauge that's in? Like I don't want to say all of them are, but there's a lot of them that use the fifty five. I want to, you know, I couldn't tell you that it's because AJ says he can't drive 55. Right. But I'd be lying. Um, no, we just we just stuck with it, and um, and we're going to expand that shortly. Um, we're going to continue with that 55 theme on the ring gauge. Um, it it feels right when it's box pressed. It really does feel right. Um, and that now that you touched on the Connecticut, uh, we're going to be we just released. Uh, a new addition to the New World Connecticut line, a Churchill 7x50, 10 count box. Oh, nice. And uh, that cigar, MSRP, before tax, is under eight bucks. Nice. For a 750 Churchill, that's a great price. And, and that's all by design. AJ wants it to be uh, accessible to everyone. So you'll be seeing that in the store shelves. There's probably uh, this coming week, maybe right before Christmas. 
That's great. So Aaron's the Connecticut expert on our team here. So it has to get past Aaron. Um, <laughs> so if, if Aaron doesn't like it, um, I don't want to be the one to tell AJ. So. <laughs> Aaron, you get to tell him. That's right. I'll tell AJ. <laughs> no, uh, no, that's a, you know, and I'm excited about that too, because I think I'm, I want to see what AJ can do with a seven inch, like longer Connecticut. Sometimes I've had mixed results with, so I'm really curious to see how that's going to smoke in a, in a longer format. Really? Yeah. I right. had it today for the first time and um, I thought it was just spectacular. I like a longer cigar. Uh, I, I tend to smoke kind of rather quickly, but I like the, the fact that they stay cooler longer so I can enjoy it longer. Yeah, that's true. I'm smoking, and I'll talk about it in a little bit, uh, the Puro Special, which was the next one. This is three years old, the one I'm smoking here. Um, uh, and I could just tell you with age, these smoke really good. I mean, with three years of age on it. Um, the Puro Special is, this is, it's a, right now it's only in one size, right? No, it, it's, uh, it's, it's got the full lining of the Revolution. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I missed that. Yeah. Puro Gordo. And um, as a matter of fact, we'll be doing something special with that in the new year. So you'll be hearing about that. We got a lot of things that are brewing and it's all kind of happening at the same time, which is, which makes it even more difficult. Uh, that cigar, uh, AJ was toying with that. I remember it was, I think it was IPCPR 2016 and he was toying with that and the name and whatnot and then all the craziness for FDA started happening and he stuck with the New World Puro Especial and that cigar was launched. Um, exquisite, exquisite, beautiful Abano wrapper. And it's really something that, that that's a brand that, that a lot of people I think have passed up on. Yeah. And, uh, and they really got to revisit that because it is absolutely exquisite. Yeah. And it's, you know, this one's three years old. It's still got all that richness that I've come to associate with this blend. Uh, it, 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 it's mellowed a little. I mean, I'm not going to say it hasn't, but it's got the, the, the flavors are still very rich um, on this thing. And I'm smoking a Gordo size here. So this is a pretty big ring gauge and, and I'm really enjoying yeah. it on that. But yeah, I think of all of them, this is the one that maybe gets a little bit lost within, in the new world portfolio, but, but an excellent cigar. Yep, Absolutely. And then I want to say it was almost two years ago, the Cameroon comes out. Cameroon. A, an affordable Cameroon cigar that you guys introduced into that line. Unbelievable. AJ came out with some, uh, some different sizes. Um, a lot of people wanted something smaller, something, you know, dog walker size, if you will. You got that short Robusto, which is um, just an amazing cigar. And um he hadn't done ever done anything in a rap in a Cameroon wrapper. Uh, Frankie Santos is a huge Cameroon fan, and uh, he was he was dying to get on uh, AJ to make that Cameroon, and it's one of his favorites. He smokes them almost every day. That and the Viva La Vida, of course. Right. Uh, but but uh, that Cameroon is just spectacular. The sweetness yeah. from that wrapper, uh, you you don't get that anywhere other than Cameroon. Right, right, and that's um that's that's the only Cameroon you guys offer right now. From am I correct on that? That's correct. On okay. the um, on the Enclave, there's a Cameroon binder. Okay. The it's interesting because like it seemed like AJ comes out with this Cameroon two years ago, and then the Cameroon explosion kind of happens after that. It you know it seemed like then a lot of Cameroon started coming out, but but that two years ago I want to say there really wasn't that explosion just yet. I, I, I noticed that, and, and when he finally said he's coming out with the Cameroon, I almost felt as if there weren't enough Cameroons on the market. Right. And, right. and it's one of my favorite rappers, probably first or second for me. And I couldn't believe it that there wasn't more. Now, yes, you're hearing a lot more. Prices are all over the place. But AJ, again, wanted it to be affordable, accessible, and, uh, and it's doing very, very well. I, I, I tend to like to smoke the Churchill. Just again, the longer cigar stays nice and cool. It's box pressed. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, I, you, you make a good point, Omar. I, 
I remember when the review came out, I wrote the review for the Cameron. I think it was like a year and a half or two years since I had reviewed any Cameroon that was new. I think I may have had a Fuente in there, but that was it. Um, so there wasn't a lot of these. And now this year, I've seen like I have a lot more Cameroon reviews. So, so yeah, yeah oh, it yeah. didn't seem like there was a lot coming out uh, at the time. Yeah, I really hope uh, AJ does more with it. Yep. You know, there, yeah, there's another brand that I think is really a, a cool brand that you have, another value brand, Last Call. Um, Last Call, and I love the Maduros. The, the Maduros is the uh, one I really like. Um, I like that concept that you have, the short smoke, uh, affordable smoke, uh, but excellent quality there. Absolutely, yeah. That that um, I think everybody already knows the story of it and how it got started. Uh, it was a cigar that AJ made at his house, and He's a huge sports fan, um, mainly basketball and, and football, American football. And um, it's, it was a hit from the get-go. Uh, the only thing we've changed on it um, was that now every, all our cigars have cellophane. It didn't have it before, if you remember. Remember that, yeah. It was that nice paper inside the box, the 25 count, and now we put uh, cellophane on them. Uh, this year that's good yeah what's um what's aj's favorite football team uh wherever tom brady plays <laughs> oh <okay>. wow <laughs> ask me what his favorite basketball team is wow what's Le LeBron, lebron plays absolutely <laughs> there you go oh so he must have been happy this year yeah, he just goes for the winners. Well, well, listen, I've been known to do a little hat, like, like, uh, so that I'm like, you know, people know my love affair with Tom Coughlin with the Giants, and I became for a couple of years when he went to the Jaguars again, a little quasi Jaguar fan. So I, I can relate to AJ on this. I'm not going to critique him on that. Yeah. So yeah. the. That's good. I mean, I can imagine watching a game with AJ. I can imagine he's really into these games. He's really, really gets into it. Yeah, I can and, see. Uh, it's cool. it's his backyard, and he's got a great setup, big screen, feet up, enjoying some of the cigars that were rolled that day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, by the way, you and I, you know, and most consumers that are going to be watching this show, everyone's always hearing about aging cigars and letting them rest and stuff like that. And it's weird because you've been to the factory. Yep. How many cigars? Smoking that were that had any age on them, nothing. Nothing. He pulls them right off. I handed AJ. He was here about a month and a half ago. He came over to Miami, and I handed him a a, a San Lotano Oval Maduro from 2012. <laughs> he left it. On the table. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Like and I listen. That thing still had still had strength. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it was stored in the best condition, and, and you couldn't even see through the cellophane anymore. Yeah. Okay? He didn't care for it at all. I, I heard you talking about uh, aging cigars for a long time and talking about some older stuff. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to be celebrating uh, my 21st wedding anniversary. Oh, wow. Congrats. And thank you. When I got married, I had a factory, so I made cigars for the wedding, and I saved a bunch of them. So tomorrow, I will smoke a cigar that is... 21 years old. Wow. Uh, quite honestly, hardly any flavor. <laughs> really not much there. But I want to think it there is, you know. Yeah. yeah, I was I think I was just telling a story on one of the shows last week or the week before. I have yeah. like 12 year old Padron uh 64s right. that they're not worth smoking. I, I waited too long. I mean, and I give them the people come over to the house. I say, you want this 12 year old Padron? I'm like I'm like, I don't think they're, I'm going to be honest. I think they lost that flavor. No, 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 no. no. Yeah, I'll take it. And they love it. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. So I just, I <laughs> tend to give them out. Like people want them, but yeah, I thought they lost all their, all their zip with it. Yeah. They do. Definitely do. Yeah. You know, and, and AJ uh, has always told me that he packages and ships the cigars when they're ready to be smoked. They don't need any age. They're at their optimum. Yeah. And, um, I, you know, I hear a lot of people in our Facebook group, uh, for, for AJ saying, oh, I just got my shipment. I'm going to let him sit for a few months. 
Yeah. I'm like, I hope you let them sit to acclimate because you live in the desert or you don't have humidity yeah. or because they're ready to go right now. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I, uh, yeah, I, you know, another thing that was really interesting, and I think I have a video of this on, on the Coop YouTube channel. This is like, AJ was in, like, he was taking us on the tour of the factory and he, there was a cigar that was, he had some, there was some furry cigars that were rolled and right. he saw some wrapper leaf, right? And he, he goes and he takes the wrapper leaf, he inspects it. And then he basically, st- he changes the wrapper on the spot. Um, and he had us smoke the original and then he gave us a few of these with the new wrapper. He put the new wrapper on right there. And it was, it was, it was an amazing thing. And how he got that wrapper on so fast was like, you, you, you know, AJ could roll. <laughs> that was the other thing. And that was just a great experience. I forget which cigar. I think it may have been one of the San Latanos that he did that on. Um, but it was, it was a very interesting experience when he went through that. So he took the original wrapper off or did he leave it on? No, he took it off. He carefully removed it. Yeah. Interesting. Probably trying to test a blend or something. He was looking, he want, yeah. His point was he was trying to inspect the wrappers too and just kind of see how the fermentation was going. Yeah, I've, I've done that with him where he'll roll a cigar on a spot or he'll put a wrapper around the current cigar yeah. he's smoking yeah. just to see the burn and the characteristics, the combustion. And then... Uh, and then after he's tried it, he'll give it to you to try. Yeah. Yeah. He tried it first. Pre-COVID. Yeah. Pre-COVID. <laughs> yeah, those were the days. Those were the days. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, another, another line, Omar, that um, I know has gotten some big accolades, Belis Artes, uh, Bes Artes. Um, I know the Maduro got a number. Maduro got a number one from Cigar Journal, too. Yep. 2019 Cigar of the Year. Yeah. The Robusto. Um, and then we expanded that with uh, Lancero at the um, at the PCA yep. uh, last year uh, with the ten count uh, Lancero, which is uh, our rep Hector Becerra out of, out of Texas. He can't get it up. I think he's buying them all. <laughs> uh, Lancero's like crazy. Uh, so he's um, that that got a lot of accolades, and um, and then we did this year. The uh, Figurado for TAA. I love that. That's a good TAA cigar, Aaron. That's a good one. Yeah. Okay. I like that one. And yeah. That <laughs> sold out. And then once the TAA was gone, we had to add it to the portfolio. Yeah. And now you can get the Figurado. Uh, same blend. Won't have the TAA sticker, of course, but uh, now everyone can, can pick it up and it's readily available. That, that's a good size to add. I think they, I think that I, I've been a little critical of some of the TA cigars, but that one, uh, I think was a really good, good one that came out. And, um, for that, you guys have seemed to be more into the TA the last few years. So, I mean, that's something newer for you guys that you weren't a part of before you, I think really before you got that AJ wasn't doing much with the TAA. No, he had just uh, gotten in. As a matter of fact, when I started, they were going to TAA in 2019 in Dominican Republic. In, uh, yeah. Getting ready to go out there for the first one. And, um, and it's been good. There's, uh, you know, it's gotten us in uh, a lot more exposure in, in shops that maybe we weren't uh, highlighted as much. And, uh, and it's, a, it's, it's a way of, of reaching out to stores that, that, um, that are supposed to be the most predominant tobacconists in the country, really. Yeah, no, it's true. There is, um, so AJ's got, I mean, so this is the cigar. I think that this is my personal favorite in the portfolio. Um, Ramon Ionis, that's definitely a more premium cigar that you have in there. It's a unique yeah. arrangement that you guys have with general, right? Is that, is that a permanent arrangement you guys are going to have with that? Or is it something that's revisited? Because that what, what AJ did with Ramon Ionis, in my opinion, that was one of my favorite cigars he's ever done. AJ has a, a very good relationship in general, and they have a very special agreement. Um, you know the history of Ramon Ionis? Yeah. You know, that, that's pretty much the first brand to ever have a cigar band on it. And I tell this to a lot of people for uh, – for a kid that grew up in Cuba and how difficult those years were, hearing all these great names like Ramon Yones, like Monte Cristo, 
like Hoyle and Monterey, A. Chuckman, Gisford, the list goes on and on. And he's now blending and putting his name on a lot of those cigars. It's just unbelievable. And then to be able to even distribute Ramon Ayones, yeah, it was a special project for him. It continues to be a special project. He, you know, it is a higher price cigar for us. There's a reason for it when you smoke that. Yeah. I've said this before. That's the one cigar I wish didn't have a cedar cedar sleeve on the, <laughs> on the barrel of cigar. Because it is like perfection. The construction is second to none. Mm-hmm. Okay. There's rich, heavy tobaccos used in that in that blend. And um, and it knocks it out of the park. Again, the Churchill, holy cow, what a cigar. Yeah, yeah, I I really like that line as well i re- i remember when it got launched though they were talking about doing some more blends under there i think there was talk of a risotto is there any more plans maybe to expand that at some point <laughs> yeah it's coming okay it's coming. <laughs> i know because i've been waiting i remember when when the announcement came that's why i i remember they were gonna do an oscuro and a risotto so i was like yeah when's that risotto coming if it's still coming um but yeah i um i kind of it's it's very interesting to see how AJ's kind of put his his interpretation on all these uh, blends over the years, but he got to put one in his portfolio, which was, I think, a really nice feather in the cap. Yeah, and, and it's uh, it's just a testament to to his dedication and and the hard work and and for a company like that to put their their trust in him and then put his their trust in us to be able to handle that distribution and get it out there so everyone can enjoy it is uh, is really an honor. Did you get a chance to smoke the new Monte Cristo 1935 he did? I did, absolutely. Did you tell AJ, why didn't we keep this blend in our portfolio? Because I, I, I thought it was fantastic. I, I, we smoked it on the Raphael, uh, Bear and I, and it was like, I was blown away by it. I'm going to give you a secret. Okay. AJ saves all the best blends for himself. The, the, okay. <laughs> but that one's pretty good. I gotta say that. No, Not that the others aren't good. That one was like really good. It is phenomenal. As a matter of fact, um, when he was here about a month and a half ago, he brought some. They didn't even have bands on them yet. And Raphael came by the office and we were able to enjoy it. And I was like blown away. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. They did a, it's one of the better Monte Cristos I've had too. Uh, I think it's going to do very well for them. I think it's going to do amazing. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It's good. And then one other brand I want to mention you, to one of your regular ones is with Aaron's one, the Diaz de Gloria. That cigar, I, that's another different type of cigar, kind of is a little more, I always called it the Pinolero on steroids a, a bit, kind of, it's kind of in that wheelhouse. Um, I another really, that. yeah, I, uh, another really unique blend in there. I could definitely see that. Um, you know, AJ wanted to do something that, that almost mimicked the Cuban cigar, if you can even, <clears throat> that's even something that can be done with Nicaraguan tobacco and, you know, it is a Nicaraguan Puro. And um, again, it's, it's the wrapper, the, the color, it looks very similar to a, to a Cuban wrapper. So does the Bayas Artes Natural, which is my go-to. Um, yeah. But that, that, that cigar is something special and uh, it's doing very well. Yeah. That's um. Like I said, I really, uh, I also like that cigar as well. Um, this year was a quieter year for you, though. You didn't introduce a new brand. It's that's the first time in a long time we haven't seen it. Was was a lot of that planned, or did COVID kind of change that? It was. Uh, it was kind of planned. Um, I I felt as though there were some brands that really didn't have their their time to shine. Right. And and so we're not really. Uh, built to be releasing something new every three months that's just going to cannibalize the next one and the next right. one, the previous one. And so when AJ sets out to make a cigar for himself, it's different than when he's doing something for somebody else because he's not doing it as, as a limited run. He needs to have the inventory of tobacco. He needs to make sure that, that he's got it in stock to be able to make it for years on, on end. He's not going to change the blend. It's his interpretation. He's the blender. This is the flavors he wants us to experience. And he puts it out there, you know? And so that's why it's harder for us to release a new brand because we're not going to say, 
we're releasing a thousand boxes and it's done. I mean, even the TA cigars that were what what limited, so to speak, mm -hmm. but the tobacco's there. The right. Lancero, Bayasar Zero Lancero was a limited edition just because we don't produce a lot of them, but the tobacco's there. Yeah. yeah. So that's uh that's that's kind of why you don't see the constant new, new, new uh, coming from from AJ Fernandez, you know, his his own company. Viva La Vida, you mentioned that cigar. That's one that you guys distribute, but that's become, I mean, we've seen that cigar get a lot of traction and a lot of people have really enjoyed that cigar. Um, but that's one you guys distribute and make, but it's not your brand. It's, it, that's, a, that's owned by the Billy and Gus, correct? Billy and Gus, absolutely. Yeah. And, that, and that's, um, it's really a good, uh, a good partnership that we have because from the moment... Uh, Billy and Gus met AJ years ago when they had the, the New York Cigar Inn. And um, when they when they get sold and got out of retail, they were already getting ready to, to manufacture their own cigar. So they were already in talks with AJ. It took a while to get off the ground. And when I met them, it was, it was a real easy transition. It made sense. There's nothing in our portfolio similar to it. I love the cigar. I smoke the Club 500 pretty much daily. It's definitely my go-to. This and the Jester are just phenomenal. And um, and this and then working with Billy and Gus, I mean, you couldn't work with with better people. Right. Uh, they're amazing gentlemen, and um, true to their word, they come from retail. Viva La Vida is a retail brick and mortar line. Can you buy it online? No. Can you see it advertised online? Yes, but it's brick and mortar because that's where they got their start. That's where they they uh, they had their beginning and and they wanted to to continue that tradition. There are some that they make that are uh, exclusives that are right. available online, and those are special sizes. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's been a great addition to our portfolio. And, uh, and again, it's a pleasure to work with those guys. I mean, they are just top notch. If we had more people like that in the world, the world would be a wonderful place. Yeah. You mentioned another brand that was kind of, I'm, I'm kind of curious what the status of it is. We're going, uh, we're going lobby. Um, that was something I know you mentioned that, uh, he was, uh, AJ worked with, um, uh, Mike Argente and Angel on that. What's the status of that brand? I mean, it was one. I think you guys distributed it for a while and then you owned it. What's the status of that brand? Yeah. So it's been going to the catalogs and, um, and there's some talk of, uh, of expanding it even more and doing more with it. Um, so I was just hearing about it this week, as a matter of fact. So you should be hearing something else uh, pretty soon on that brand. Yeah. I, I always like, I love that cigar. Those are those box press Maduro's that came out. Um, yeah. That, that Box press Maduro is phenomenal. Yeah, for a while that was like a like if I've had a rotation cigar, I was smoking a lot of them for a while. Uh, yeah, with I guess that. what size I, I was rotating that double Corona. Yeah, the double Ooh. Corona was the one. Yeah, a yeah. box press double Corona. Yeah, I agree. And it's I think it's because and I'll say this, it's I always in my opinion this is me talking I think a double Corona is like the toughest size to nail. Like I'm the most critical yeah. of that. And uh, yeah, that one really did. Yeah. All right. I got one more brand question. I'm hoping you'll you'll kind of tell me. Any chance we'll see Mayimbe back at some point? Oh. <laughs> Do you have a camera or a microphone in my office? <laughs> <laughs> I have one more Mayimbe left, and I wasn't smoking it on the show tonight because it's I get a little distracted. But I do have one more left from that that original run. So Frankie and I are throwing out an idea. We have an idea. We have a concept on how we want to relaunch my Yimbe. And that's all I can tell you. Okay. <laughs> all right. But I definitely, well, I got to see it through. I got to see it through. Run through it, run through it, guys. It's because, yeah, uh, I have one more left. <laughs> and I've just been like saving it for some occasion. So you know, our know. rep will occasionally find us a store that'll have a box out in the back somewhere, that forgotten box. And, you know, they, of course, they're going to snatch it up and buy it. And, uh, there's a few out there still in the wild, and I, we see them come up in our Facebook group all the time. People have posted it, and I'm like, where are they finding this? I can't get any. 
I I have actually looked for some more of them, and I don't hunt a lot. Um, but yeah, I I enjoyed that cigar. I I had, I bought a box of the originals, so I'm down. Like I said, I looked for there was one store in New Mexico that had them, and um, I only I should have just bought the rest of what they had. I I bought one for the road when I was driving to Vegas, but I did find one in New Mexico. But this is like 2016. I think when I, when I saw, so that's a while ago already. Yeah. Yeah. I, there, there might be a few. I'll see if I find any, I'll let you know. Oh, awesome. Um, Aaron, any more brand questions we want to ask? Uh, no, I think you've hit them all. That's okay. What we were going to focus on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the other thing I wanted to ask you, Omar, and we saw some video out of, of this, uh, obviously the hurricanes, they kind of wrecked a lot of havoc, and I heard there was some serious damage to some of the farms. What's the status of that right now? Uh, there was uh, definitely, um, at the very minimum, a setback in the time frame for, uh, for the growing season to start. So everything has been delayed, I'd say, a couple weeks. Could that mean that less cigars are going to be grown this year. I mean, less tobacco is going to be grown, possibly. Um, there was some soil erosion. Um, as a matter of fact, AJ shared some pictures with me today. I don't know if Frankie was able to put them up on social media um, where he's already got uh, plants in the ground in uh, Jalapa. So That's the good. growing season has commenced and um, it's, it's actually, it's a testament to the will and, and the desire to make it happen down there. You know the conditions down there. You know, the, this, these hurricanes were very devastating. And yet, there's still people out there to go out there to work. And it's their livelihood, man. And they're making it happen. They're making it happen. And AJ is right alongside them. I, again, he was dressed to the nines today in the middle of a field just destroying his shoes and the hems of his pants, you know, <laughs> he, but he, he had to yeah. go. You know? that, yeah. And that's the other thing, which I, I got to go to the farms with him a few times and he loves being in the farm. And like I said, he was with his Ferragamo cues in the farm. Uh, <laughs> uh, he was, he found a way not to get muddy. Like, like the rest of us did, but yeah, he, uh, he knew all the tricks there. <laughs> Yeah, just keep him away from fires, I guess. Is the yeah, well, he didn't light any fires on the farms. I can tell you that. He <laughs> he made sure it was like a brush area up in the Ocotel away from the building and everything. <laughs> no, but he's uh, he's really committed. That's why he's he's mainly down there most you know most of the time. He comes here to the states very very infrequently, and uh, now with COVID, it's he's only been here twice this year. He left. He was doing a tour with uh, with Rafael for the uh, Aging Room Cuatro Maestro. I got Cigar of the Year last year with Cigar Aficionado. Still a Cigar of the Year. And um, and they started shutting everything down, so he got the next flight out of here. Didn't want to get stuck here. Wow. Uh, but, yeah, that's that's uh, that's what's going on right right there. I should be – you should be seeing more pictures and videos of the farms uh, coming up here shortly as the growing season starts to ramp up. But it is, it's delayed. It's, it's, I'm going to say it could be as much as 30 days. So, well, yeah, that's, uh, but it's good. At least they were able to get things going. That's, that's the important yeah. thing. And, there, and it happened before the crop was planted. So there were no crops lost uh, as a result of that. That's right. that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Esteli was okay. Right. I mean, I've been to the farms, the farms I've been to when we're in Esteli and right off the Pan American highway, they are, um, but Esteli was a hit as hard as the, the Hopper, it sounded like. They didn't have the wind, but they had a lot of the uh, the flooding. Yeah. And then the further north you went, the worse it got. But yeah. they're pretty far in from, from the coast. Yeah. From where it came from. They just got a lot of rain. And, uh, you know, it's uh, it just a, a lot of soil erosion. Yeah. I mean, it could have did, like, like, a lot of the manufacturers talked about Hurricane Mitch. Uh, and that did a lot more damage, um, from what I heard from people. Yeah. Like, so I think a lot of people learn from that one. It sounds like too. Absolutely. All right. So, um, let's kind of go to this giveaway we have tonight for our audience. Omar, you have something very special okay. that you're going to offer to our audience tonight. 
yes, we've got a uh, really, really beautiful New World uh, humidor that we want to give away. And it's actually uh, autographed by AJ on his last trip here, uh, beginning of November. So one lucky winner. Yeah. So we're going to put a question out to the audience. Omar, do you have a question in mind that you want? And then I can kind of, I, I, I tend to be very easy with my audience. Everyone accuses me, Bear accuses me of being too easy because we do some contests on Tuesdays too. But if you guys have an idea for it, let me know. If not, I'll throw one out there. What do you think, Aaron? I don't know. The one I hinted earlier or you come up with a, a better one? Yeah, that was a good one. If you, if, you, if Don will be able to give us a good number. I think Don can give us I have a pretty good idea of what number it is. Okay. All right. I think that will be a good one. All right. So Don Williams, okay, whether you know him or not, one of the a great rep uh, in, in, the, in the southeast here. The question is, how many caps does Don Williams have in his collection? That's a and, he- and I just want the number hashtagged with AJ Fernandez. So it's got to be hashtagged so I can identify the comments. And I guess we'll get the person who's closest to the number. Yeah. You can guess. Sounds fair. Someone's going to get it anyway. So you could throw a number out there is what I'm saying. Very, it's an easy question because I don't know the answer to it. I'm going to have to validate this with, with Don, right? We're going to have to validate this with Don before we give it away. Hashtag First guess was a- way too low. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd go high if you're going to guess. Yeah, go more than five. Go more than five is what I would go. So that's the question. I'm seeing some good answers in there already. Uh, or how many assists did Don Dish in his career at Tiffin? <laughs> that's Frankie. Oh, that's another high number. Yeah. yeah. I see Frankie, Tim uh, are in there. Sean Miles is in there. Uh, Billy. Billy's in there from uh, Viva. So appreciate everyone in there. There's some good numbers rolling yeah. in. Yeah. So that's. Hey, I'll, I'll ship it out tomorrow. Yep, I got to get the nice. number. We'll get the number. I think the numbers I'm seeing come in are, are good. So I'm going to go to close. I'm going to just closest to the approximate number that Don gives me. And uh, and then I'll I'll announce the winner, and you have 24 hours to come turn around for this humidor. If you, if you can't get back to me in 24 hours, it's going to the next person. So that that's how we'll do it. That's fair. Yep. Um, I... Uh, by the way, just so you know, uh, members of the primetime team are not eligible, nor is Cigar Media. So just keep that in mind. Uh, we want this to go to, to a real a real AJ Fernandez cigar fan. So you go. Don can't win either. Don can't win either. Yeah. Um, <laughs> see an answer as many as we authorize them to have. <laughs> All right. Um, Omar, this is our Cattle Baron steak question of the night uh, for Cattle Baron cigars that we ask. And it's a question related to steak. And I'll just kind of, it's usually a simple question. I usually ask one or two, but what is your favorite steakhouse to go to in the country? Ooh. Man, that's tough. I went to a really good one today. I went to Los Ranchos. Frankie and I snuck out and had a really good lunch today. Good Nicaraguan steakhouse here in Miami, staple for the last forty plus years. Nice. Um, but you know, you, you know, I'm from Miami, so uh, the the better known steakhouses also tend to be the more chic, uh, fancy. <laughs> so I'd say probably Prime One Twelve. Okay, I've that's okay. come up a couple of times on this show. Really? Okay. Yeah. I'm not alone in that. Yeah, I, no. Listen, I was a big Morton's fan for years because I just finished my dinner and spark up at the table. Right. Those days are over. <laughs> when, so when Don, when Don Williams was working in other industries, uh, Tinderbox Cigars would have their big cigar event and they, they'd rent out a Morton Steakhouse for the night every year. I mean, and they bring in some big names, Padron, Rocky, Fuente. 
I mean, and those are like they would get the whole Morton Steakhouse when they were able to do that in Charlotte. Um, um, they're still able to do, it, but I don't think Morton's does it anymore, unfortunately, because the the one that was big enough closed down. So uh, that was always a yeah, that was always a big. Dom will tell you that was a big event every year. That was and like the, the event. One I, uh, the one that I would go to in uh, here in Miami on Brickle. It's almost like a dungeon, no windows. It was a, kind of in a basement. I loved it. It had that old world feel. Always good service. And uh, and then you get to smoke right there at the table, anywhere. That's awesome. Yeah, there's one in South Carolina you can go to with that. Uh, New York Prime in uh, Myrtle Beach is like that. Which uh, I have not been to yet, but everyone's telling me about it. Okay. And it's got to be rare, by the way. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, good. There you go. You got to be uh, blood and everything on it. Yeah, no hockey pucks. <laughs> <laughs> my 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 dad is um unfortunately he would be like banned from any state club. Um, he is like it has to be shoe leather. I'm like dad. Oh, oh. I mean it's like embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like shoe leather, dad. You can't do that. I mean, you gotta have a little pain. No, no, he's like afraid that I don't know something freaked him out as a kid. With the blood, because uh, he's afraid really? of blood in general. Yeah, so that's why he's like that. Yeah, I just, it's, I said, you shouldn't even have steak. I told him so. Uh, anyway, let's get into what we're smoking tonight, uh, and then Omar, we'll get into a little of your baseball then. Um, and uh, I want to mention that uh, what we smoke tonight, sponsored by Tailored Smoke, located in the heart of downtown Charlotte's epicenter. And now just outside the Scarlet Motor Speedway in Concord, North Carolina, Tailored Smoke is your one-stop shop for Tailored Smoking Experience. And they carry A.J. Fernandez cigars as well. Aaron, you're smoking the Diaz de Gloria. Yep, smoking the Diaz de Gloria. Um, as you can tell, the construction is impeccable as always. Um Wood forward profile. It's got like a trailing cinnamon to it. Um, it was kind of a little bit, the cinnamon was about a little bit fuller at the start of the cigar and kind of fades back a little bit as, it, as the cigar goes along. Uh, about midway point, some uh, dry earth kind of joins into that. Uh, Retrohale's got like a nice uh, mellow creaminess to go along with the, the wood and the cinnamon and the, the earthiness there. Um, so it's a nice well-rounded profile. Strength is maybe a little bit uh, above medium, um, but it's not overpowering at all. Um, and like I said, the construction is, is perfect and that's nice, uh, you know, a, a, a core trait of everything that AJ makes. So it's, a it's a good starting point always. What are you smoking? Will? I'm smoking the new world pro special in the Gordo size. It's my favorite size of the line. Um, like I said, these are a little over three years old. Um, it's, I'd say it's still medium to full in strength and body. So it's still got some some very much uh, boldness to it. Um, not overly aggressive on the spices. Uh, you know, there's a subtle uh, white pepper note I'm getting in there. I'm getting the earthy notes. I'm getting some of the bold espresso notes that you get in here. Uh, touch of sweetness, not overly sweet, uh, which is right in my wheelhouse. Uh, incredibly balanced cigar. It's one of those where, you know, you puff on it and kind of roll the smoke around in your mouth. You're really going to get some of the great flavors of this cigar. Um, again, impeccable construction on here as well. Uh, the combustion for this Gordo is great. Um, I have the reputation of really liking Gordos. Um, this one just really clicks in the Gordo size for me. Um, so this is an excellent cigar. Um, and uh, like I said, it's one flies under the radar, but I definitely will get your hands on it. Very nice. Yeah. Are you smoking, Omar? I am smoking. I just finished the Viva La Vida Club 500. That's right, man. Ever since the cigar I'm smoking now, ever since it was released in 2016, I, there are a few nights I could count on one hand that I have not closed the night out without smoking one. Bayas Art is natural. There you it's go. A, a Toro. Today's a Toro. Um, this to me, if there was, the, if this was, if I could only have one cigar the rest of my life, however long that would be, this is it. End of you story. Know you know what I noticed about Bayas Artes? It's like there's the Maduro and the natural camp. So it's kind of mm -hmm. like a lot of people like to compare, like kind of like with Padrones in a way. It's There's that comparison. A lot of people do like to kind of go, and you'll probably get half people like the natural and half people like the Maduro. I mean, it's, it's kind of if you put people in a room with that. For me, this is uh, almost like uh, it, it's perfection in the sense that 
breakfast, lunch, dinner, late night, it doesn't matter. Have 10 a day, clean palate at the end. You're ready for another one. Satisfying, extremely well balanced. It's exquisite. The wrapper, no other cigar in the world has this wrapper. It's exclusive to AJ. He grows it himself. And from the day I tried it, this came out with La Gran Llave together in 2016, if you remember. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They were given out at the IPR together. Yep, I remember that very well. I was going back and forth at the show. I was already smoking it before then, and I just couldn't get enough of it. So this is, I start every day with this. I end every day with this. Um, if you haven't had this, you've got to go get it. <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you, this is bar none. There's a sweetness on that cigar that's very unique, and I guess it's coming from that wrapper, yeah. Elegant smoke. Yeah. It's very elegant, very rich. And by the way, I want to mention, people got to guess higher on this on this. Dog yeah. They, they got to they gotta, they gotta wrap it up. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I will allow people to put the numbers higher. So yeah, double, double digits, you're, you're, you're wasting your guess. Yeah. yeah. Don Williams, who is our... Who is our contest person here? We'll have to we'll get the validation from him, and and you're getting hints here. So this is not one you can Google, guys. You have to kind of we're telling you Don yeah. Williams has a lot of caps, is what I've been told. Um, you can Google his his Tiffin uh, basketball records, but there you go. Not yeah, his caps. Don's a big uh, Don's a big Cleveland guy too, so uh, I love talking Cleveland sports with him as well. Awesome. All right, so Omar, I'm gonna do a quick sponsor thing, and then we'll get into uh, the next, the last segment here with you. Um, awesome. So I want to mention Miami Cigar and Company. Nestor Miranda said it best: "There is a mystery and depth to Africa that captivates my spirit, always drawing me to come back." This cigar, Don Lino Africa, captures the way going there makes me feel. Cigar making is an art form, but in that moment when the cigar becomes art itself, you have something special. Don Lino Africa returns from Miami Cigar and Company, the, the brand you remember, blended even more massively this time in partnership with Tobacco Air AJ Fernandez. It's an exotic and complex blend meant to mesmerize. It's available in five box press patolas. Don Lino Africa returns. Ask for it at your local retailer. And by Jerry Tobacco, the authentic Corojo leaf is one of the most robust and flavorful tobacco leaves out there. During the golden age of cigars in Cuba, it's a leaf of choice to make some of the world's greatest cigars. Because it's one of the most challenging ones to cultivate, it fell out of favor by the 1990s. In the Hamistran Valley in Honduras, Julio Aroa took on the challenge of growing Corojo from the original seeds, and in 2000, he successfully reintroduced authentic Corojo to the market. With over 50 years' experience in the tobacco business from growing and curing tobacco to scar production, the Jerry Tobacco Farm has been able to continue to deliver products to market with Authentic Corojo. Now Jerry Tobacco brings you the Aladino line, available in a 100% Authentic Corojo Puro, San Andreas Maduro, Ecuadorian Connecticut Shade, Cameroon, or Habano Wrapper, representing the Golden Age of Scars from 1947 to 1961. Now, local retailer, be sure to ask for Jerry Tobacco, a legacy that is tasted in every drawer. And by Toscano Cigars, as rustic and strong as the people smoke them, try Toscano's rustic and full body flavors and aromas. Made in Italy with 100% dark fire cured tobacco from the U.S. and Italy, it is one of the best-selling cigars in the world. Toscano Cigars are the perfect combination of American and Italian craftsmanship, whether in the traditional long format or the short format Toscanello. Toscano Cigars are dry cured, handmade, and fire cured for your enjoyment anytime, anywhere. Visit your local premium cigar retailer today and look for Toscano Cigars today. And uh, we're going to get into our um, Alec Bradley Live True segment, uh, sponsored by Alec Bradley. 500 cigars are set of fire in this country every minute, a staggering statistic. Wait, that's a good thing. All those folks relaxing with a fine cigar. The trouble is a lot of those cigars aren't worth remembering. They're just plain forgettable. That's why you should pick up an Alec Bradley cigar, and you'll taste that baby and say, mm-hmm, I'll remember you, Alec Bradley. Learn more at alecbradley.com. So in our Live True segment, uh, Omar, we talk about discussions that maybe you have in a cigar lounge or just off the topic of cigars um, or just in general. And I remember when you were on KMA and I learned something about you, Omar. You had a career in professional baseball. Yeah, I had a little short one there, but uh, it's, uh, it's something I did for still half my life. Ever since I was a little, little kid uh, growing up here in Miami, uh, my grandfather emigrated from Cuba in 1954, uh, signed with the Washington Senators and came to play ball here. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, never got back, never got a chance to go back to Cuba because of what happened there with uh, with the Castros. But uh, he did continue to play in Mexico till 67. And uh, he never had a son. He had my mom, one daughter. 
So when I was born, uh, all I ever remember was baseball. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know, I wasn't allowed to go skiing, uh, roller roller skating. I uh, couldn't go bowling. Uh, very, you know, it was like got to take care of the arm. I was a yeah. pitcher, also hit. Um, so baseball was a big part of my life. Um, I started traveling on when I was 11 years old up to Tennessee to play. And then uh, when I was 12 years old, 1986, I won the Pony League World Series out in uh, Pinole, California, just north of Oakland. Oh, wow. That's like 15 wow. minutes from me. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, there was a park called Fernandez Park, believe it or not. Okay. Fernandez. Um, beat Puerto Rico there twice to win the, the, the championship. Uh, Alex Rodriguez was on that team. Wow. Um, yep. A lot of guys that uh, either – Played uh, college ball, some pro ball, um, and uh, we did it again in, when I was 14 and 88. We got third place in the world, lost to uh, South Korea. Uh, high school, college, uh, went to FIU mm-hmm. here in Miami, and then signed with the Dodgers. I had gotten drafted out of high school, but I was 17 years old, and my dad said, you're not playing professionally. You're going to college at least three years. Ah, uh, Yeah. <laughs> So I uh, had to do that and then uh, signed with the Dodgers, uh, played one year, the year after the, the strike, and they had some real big cuts. So they let 60 people go out of their farm system, went and played independent league um, out in Indiana. And um, it was fun. It was really fun. It was hard to let it go. Uh, all the while, I remember uh, driving up to Indiana in uh Spring of uh, 96, I rented a Lincoln Town Car one way, Miami to Indianapolis. <laughs> oh, wow. They brought my whole bedroom, all my wardrobe, and the front seat had two humidors, and I just drove up smoking cigars um, the whole way. Yes. Great. When you played, go ahead, Aaron, have you said him? No, go ahead. I'll, I'll ask after. Okay. When you played with the Dodgers, you were were you in Montana, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah, in Great Falls, Montana. Wow. Uh, culture shock. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, I remember, you know, you grow up in the city, and then I'm like, hey, do you guys hunt? Uh, you guys go hunting here? And they're like, we don't hunt deer. We kill deer. <laughs> you just go five minutes out of town, you're, you see everything. I uh, remember few days off you get a lot of a very few days off uh glacier national park just amazing uh that big sky country that part of the country is just beautiful beautiful um a lot of good memories there so were you a pitcher the whole way through to the end yeah after uh after college they wouldn't let me hit anymore so i stayed as a pitcher um and uh it, it's it's hard it's really hard professional sports in general is not um you really lose the essence of that team camaraderie in high school yeah. in college you still have a little bit in professional baseball it's every man for himself sure and so what was your what would you say your number one pitch was i had a big 12 to 6 curveball okay oh wow didn't throw it and haven't thrown it in a while uh, fastball in the low to mid 90s um, had a pretty good change up, especially for lefties. They hated it. Um, and it was good. I, I never got hurt. I got hurt years later, uh, after I had retired, but, uh, after my second season, they offered me a really bad contract. I, I was, uh, the property of this one team in Indiana and they owned my rights and they gave me a really bad contract. And that's when I had was contemplating getting into the cigar industry. And, um, and I said, all right, I got something to transition to. I didn't miss it as much as I thought I would, um, mm-hmm. but it was really fun. It was uh, it's a great time in my life. Yeah, you know, it's what was it like made... pitching in Montana? Is is I was gonna say, yeah, Sorry, well. yeah, that was that's the same like that, Aaron. So what's it like pitching in Montana? Is Montana like um, kind of one of those uh, high elevation uh, kind of uh, more of a hitters kind of a uh, area? Yeah, so it's interesting because. Um, Everyone throws hard to minor leagues. Everyone throws hard to professional baseball. So everyone had a problem with their, with their curveball, their slider. It just doesn't break. Uh, your off-speed yeah. don't, don't break. 
my 12 to 6 curveball would break. So the pitching coach came and said, listen, 0 2 one 2 2 2 3 2 curveball every time. I don't care. Just throw it. Mm-hmm. I, I remember um, there was two guys that I remember. I don't remember their names. And the, the fields were much bigger. So like center field's 430. The gaps are like 395. Wow. It's 350 down the line. And yet guys are hitting them off the cliffs, you know? Just a, it's, yeah. It looks like they're hitting an eight iron off the plate, you know? Just bombs. Right. And um, I remember that uh, we were playing up in Canada against uh, Toronto's minor league team. And there was this big guy. He, would, he was all over the plate. And I really wanted to throw him a fastball inside. I really felt like I could get a belt high fastball in the inner part of the plate and get it by him, maybe even break his back. Mm-hmm. But the, the scouting report is don't throw him a fastball. It has to be something off speed. So this guy, yeah. I've already faced him a couple of times. He hasn't seen anything other than curveball, steady diet. The first one he fell on his rear end. He just threw himself backwards down the yeah. middle, right? I did three in a row. He never even swung. The third time I face him that night, I decide to try to sneak a fastball inside. 93, 94 miles an hour. That ball hasn't landed. Okay? Yeah. Scouting uh, report was right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that ball hasn't landed. And it went down the line. Luckily, it was foul. It was a foul ball. Yeah. The pitching jumps up out of the dugout, and he's just standing there like this. And I'm like, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Here we go, back to the deuce, sit down. And that happened to me twice. We had in our field, we had a, a giant Marlboro man uh, right above, you know, the, the fence is 20 feet high and it's 395 in the gap. And there's a huge Marlboro man. It's not there anymore. I checked in Google Maps. It's <laughs> not there anymore. Those days are over. Those well. days are over, yeah. I had a guy, Dominican kid, hit one off that Marlboro man. Again, trying to just muscle one in there, and he hammered it. You know, Omar, we were talking about – you mentioned Montana. It's interesting because we do the music show, and um, country country music singer Charlie Pride recently passed away, and we were doing the research on his life, and he played he played uh, Negro and minor league baseball in, Mo- in Montana as well. Which I thought was, you know, and I kind of was, and I thought that's what you had played too. It's kind of just interesting because we don't think of Montana as a baseball area at all, just because of where it is. Yeah. The, uh, when I was when I was coming up with Dodgers, the uh, the team that everybody wanted to go to was in Yakima, Washington. So I was kind of like when I when they said, "Oh, you're going to Great Falls," I'm like, "Ah, it's not where I really want to go," um, but but I loved it. Absolutely amazing. Amazing experience. Great people out there. Listen, it's 10 o'clock at night. It's still daytime. And the Aurora Borealis and right. this gorgeous, gorgeous. I've been to Yakima, uh, Washington, because – and I remember I, I went there, and, and I guess that claim to fame was also uh, the Mare brothers. Uh, Phil and Steve Mare were from there. So the whole town was like – there was just still icons there, I remember, when I went there. Um, yeah. Yeah, but I, so that's I know where it's it's not, it's not far from Seattle. That's when the first time I ever heard country music. You know, you don't hear country music in Miami. Yeah, no. And Who's your team? On, yeah. uh, God, I'm sorry. I played in the, um, I was one in the Dodgers. I was the only guy that spoke English fluently and Spanish fluently. Mm-hmm. We had five Mexican kids, five Dominicans, and I was like the translator on the team. Mm. Um, <laughs> when I went to Indiana. Um, I would go to the local country station in the morning because they'd like me to go and, and say my last name, Fernandez, and, <laughs> and and speak that right into the mic. And it was it was fun. It's it's small town USA, but it's so fun. Yeah. Yeah, and you mentioned the country music. Charlie Pride was singing like before games, and that's how he kind of got his break. They heard him singing before the games or after the games, and someone saw him and offered him a recording contract. That's how he ended up moving into the music business. That's awesome. Who is your team right now? You know, I, I never really had a team growing up. Um, I used to like the Orioles just because they had spring training here in Miami, uh, in the old Bobby Maduro Stadium. 
Uh, and my dad would take me when I was little to go see Jim Palmer there and, and uh, later Cal Ripken Jr. And, and so I rooted for the Orioles when I was young. I didn't get to go to a major league game until I was 14. Mm-hmm. Um, then, of course, the Marlins come to town and, you know, now we finally have a team. Now it's the Miami Marlins, not the Florida Marlins. Yeah. So. yeah. But uh, they've been a roller coaster since the beginning, no matter who's at home. They had a great year this year. I mean, you can't uh, look. They they kept the Phillies out of the playoffs. I'll say that straight out. It's because we couldn't beat you guys all, all year. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, I've never been to spring training. That's something I've never done. Wow, you know, I, that's I, crazy. Yeah, I I didn't because I didn't go to Florida until I was in my mid twenties for the first time. Yeah, all, mm. you think about all times I go to. So it's something I've been wanting to do that. My my older, we've been talking about it. I don't know when it when it's going to happen, sir. I've been to senior league baseball when they had okay. senior league baseball. Yep. I did go to see I did go to see the St. Petersburg Pelicans, um, which were like the dominant team when they had senior league baseball. But uh, um, yeah, that was the only thing I got to see. So I really want to get the spring training. If you do, it's it's a different experience because you're much closer. It's yep. much more relaxed. It's not. It takes, listen, you're going to spend all day. You're going to see a lot of things. You're going to see everybody uh, working on different things. A game could be going on. Some players pulled out of that game to go work on in the cage on something that some coach saw. It's really, if you are a fan of baseball, you have to do spring thing, spring training. Yeah. I, I've done minor leagues, a lot of minor leagues. I mean, the big, my biggest minor league game I ever went to was uh, the Trenton Thunder, Nomar Garcia Parra. Um, had a rehab assignment down in, in Trenton because that was before the Yankees took over that the Red Sox had it. So that was a big deal to go see him. And it was, like I said, I had really good seats there. So you can really to see Nomar up close back then was a big deal. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, uh, so, um, yeah. So now, uh, and I know there's a baseball card of you online somewhere. I think a picture of, a, I think Paul found that baseball card of you. Yeah, there's a picture. Of, they're, they're yeah. yeah, I can't buy them all. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's a collector's item in the cigar industry. There, what's AJ's favorite yeah. team? Does he is he a baseball guy? Does he have a favorite team? He watches a little bit. I haven't heard him talk about his favorite. Um, Maybe the Yankees, probably. <laughs> Why not, right? Yeah. Yeah. Why not, right? Uh, but yeah, hopefully, we get. I mean, I don't know what's going to be the state of baseball this year, it's going to be interesting to see. Um, so, uh, I mean, I'm already hearing Toronto may have to play in Buffalo again next year. So uh, at least part wow. of the year. Yeah. So, uh, it's going to be very, very, in- I, there'll be baseball next year. I, I don't doubt it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, for sure. I mean, if the it NFL's be- having games with guys getting COVID in the middle of the week, there's going to be baseball. Uh, so, all right. Aaron, anything else we got for Omar? I think we're good. Yeah. So Omar, I want to thank you very much. Uh, I also want to give thanks to Frankie Santos um, and AJ himself. And of course, uh, Don and the reps, the support we've gotten from you guys is second to none. We, we greatly appreciate it. Um, and so thank you guys for the opportunity, you know, to work with you guys. Yeah. We want, thank you very much for, for having me on tonight. I was going to have Frankie, but he running late and, it, it went pretty crazy. We'll, but, we'll get him uh, back. We'll, we'll get Frankie back. We'll get Frankie next time for sure. Oh yeah, we'll yeah. definitely do that. He'll. Uh, he's been chatting up on the. Yeah. On the feed here. He, he, yeah. He, no, he's been um, awesome. AJ, yeah. I, AJ. I don't know if AJ's logged in. Um, maybe Freddie's there translating for him. But um, you know, we appreciate everything you do. Uh, your commitment. Uh, your professionalism. Uh, you know, you're just you're just day in and day out doing it, and uh, thank you very much. Um, the videos live in, live online forever, and people can go back and hear them and see and a lot of good information, a lot of stuff that you normally wouldn't um, wouldn't hear. And it's 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 cigar talk, cigar lounge talk, right? Yeah. And uh, go back to the to what we talked about at the beginning about about the relationships that 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 come about enjoying these beautiful leaves that. Yeah. Uh, that some people take for granted, right? Um, you really got to love this industry. You got to love cigar smoking to work in this industry. 
It's really tough, but there are some really good payoffs. Number one, the best, the best tobacco in the world, great time to be living to smoke the best cigars and the people you meet. Mm-hmm. And if you like, you know, making friends and meeting new people and making long lasting relationships and you can conduct business and life, that's, that's what makes it uh, memorable and pleasurable for me. Uh, our motto is passion, discipline, and great tobacco. And the passion and the discipline and the great tobacco all comes from AJ. You know, I, I always tell people, that's the hard part. We don't work hard. My job is not hard. Okay. The hard part is done in those fields, those thousands of employees that he's got down there busting their backs in those fields. I mean, he sent me pictures of oxen yeah. uh, today. Yeah. And it's better, it's better for the ground than the tobacco. And I understand that, but geez, they did that 200 years ago. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people using the oxen still down there. I've seen it. Yeah. yeah. You know, John Deere doesn't have a, a distribution down there. Right. My goodness. So, and, but listen, AJ has been able to take a lot of that technology and the old school, old world uh, way of doing traditional way of doing things and blended that together. And what he comes up with is just unbelievable. I don't even want to begin to understand all of it. I leave that up to him because he's it, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and we get to enjoy the finished product here. We make solid relationships. I'm thankful that he's entrusted me with, with a lot. Um, and uh, the reps are out there. Like I told you, they're the face. They're day in and day out. Man, it's been tough this year to get out. Yeah. Oh no. Um, I pulled them off the out of off the road very early in March, and I know they uh, they still snuck out from time to time because I track their expenditure. But <laughs> <laughs> like uh, I said, I didn't see Don, but it's because of me because I've I've been very I have not gone to a cigar lounge since March. Uh, no, I shouldn't say I went. I've gone twice. That's not true. I have gone twice, but it was very empty when I went. Don gives you for the hats. You got to add the two that you have for him, right? Yeah, I got to get him the second one. Yeah, so he's got one. I'll add one because yeah, okay. I do have that one for Don. And uh, he, yeah, it's 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 in a safe box, uh, um, so it won't collect dust or anything like that. But I appreciate it, uh, Will and Aaron. Thanks for for having me on tonight. Uh, don't forget to put that firefighting video up somewhere. It will be yeah, that. it will be in the link for the show. So yeah, when I put oh, the then. show up on uh, yeah, the show will have the link in it, and you'll be able to view it. Um, that'll be awesome yeah it's a, it's a it's i still get people talking to me about that <laughs> absolutely yeah amazing how many people still mention that uh to me because that was 2017 so it's almost four years old it was february 2017 when that happened so it's almost four years and people are still talking about that yeah, awesome. wait till you put over the you won't recognize it uh, yeah i mean it's been a while i said that was just in its infancy when i was there yeah so i'm, I'm really looking forward to it it's been expanded and fully remodeled. Yeah. It's like a resort. It's like a well, resort in the middle. Wow. Oh, wow. I mean, AJ's, AJ's compound in Esteli with the whole, I mean, man, the, the rooms there that you stay in, they're top notch. Uh, that got remodeled as well. Wow. I mean, that was, re- I mean, right. they had that big gallery, that big community room there, the pool. Yep. Uh, yeah. 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 So uh, I enjoyed that. Yeah. It's, uh, I, I'm, I can't wait to get back to Nicaragua. And I, I say, if you get a chance to go on an AJ tour, anyone go on it. You know, it's 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 well worth it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. When things get back to normal, we're going to open that up again. We really want everybody that enjoys AJ's brands to, and he wants everybody to go down there because, like can, I said, he doesn't come here much. So get down there. We'll help you get down there. We'll make it happen. Yeah. It'll be memorable. We'll never forget it. Yep. No, it'll be great. Uh, it'll be great. We really look forward to it. Omar, uh, if I don't speak to you, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. I know we'll be talking uh, soon. I guess it's thanks again to Frankie and AJ and the team for everything. Thank you. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, you guys, to everybody out there. And uh, definitely a pleasure. All right. Thanks, Omar. That Thank is you, Omar. Omar. That's Omar Fernandez, the Director of Operations for uh, AJ Fernandez Cigars here on the Primetime Show. And uh, we got one more segment, guys, um, to go in. So I'm just going to do a commercial break. Then we're going to get into Aaron's article on uh, when a 90 is not a 90. 
Uh, and I'm pretty excited about that. But first, let's mention Dumbarton Tobacco and Trust. With Dumbarton Tobacco and Trust, Master Blender Steve Saka set out to create Puro Son Compromiso, cigars without compromise. This represents an expression of Saka's closely held value of his and attests in three simple words everything Saka wants to accomplish. Cigars are more than a passion of Saka, they're a way of life. As for the brands of Dumbarton Tobacco and Trust, Sober Misa, Mi Carita, Umbagog, Marcel de Saka, Todos Los Dias, and Sin Compromiso at your local tobacconist. And of course, by La Aurora Cigars in the heart of Santiago, Dominican Republic on the rolling floor at the La Aurora Cigar Factory is a second reserved only for the elite. The best of the best. These elite cigar rollers work for over 10 years to simply get the opportunity to make a historic cigar. Those cigars are the La Aurora Preferitos, featuring six different wrappers and a beautifully packaged Perfecto shape. La Aurora Preferitos have been the preferred cigar of the Leon family for over 117 years. Take part in a legendary tradition that started the Dominican cigar industry. Look to the lion, La Aurora Cigars. We are Dominican defined. And by J.C. Newman Cigar Company, founded in 1895 by Julius Caesar Newman, the J.C. Newman Cigar Company is the oldest family-owned premium cigar maker in America. For four generations and over 125 years, J.C. Newman has been handcrafting many of the world's finest cigars. J.C. Newman is headquartered in an iconic 110-year-old-plus cigar factory in the Ybor City National Historic Landmark District of Tampa, Florida. At this factory known as El Rojo, J.C. Newman has premium cigars by hand and hand-operated antique machines. The J.C. Newman Pensa Factory is the second largest in Nicaragua. It's a brick house, Pueblo de Mar, El Baton. Quorum and Yagua cigars are hand rolled. JC Newman's Diamond Crown, Maximus, Julius Caesar, and Black Diamond cigars are handmade by tobacco lawyer A. Fuente in the Dominican Republic. With its long ranch partners, the Arturo Fuente family, the Newmans have founded the Cigar Family Charitable Foundation, which supports low income families in the Dominican Republic with education, healthcare, vocational training, and clean water. Visit jcnewman.com to learn more. Macasa Cuevas Cigars. The Cuevas family has five generations of experience in cigar making. For many years, they have manufactured cigars for many industry leaders at a Las Lavas factory in the Dominican Republic. Now the Cuevas family brings their very own brand to market with Casa Cuevas Cigars. Try the Casa Cuevas Connecticut, the Casa Cuevas Habano, the Casa Cuevas Maduro, La Mandaria, as well as the Cuevas Reserva line. If they don't carry it, be sure to ask your old retail retailer for Casa Cuevas Cigars. Casa Cuevas Cigars, from our casa to yours. And finally, by Adventura Cigars. Adventura the Explorer is the first creation by Marcel Noble and Henderson Ventura. Immediately after lighting up the Explorer, the Mexican rapper will delight the aficionado with his dark chocolate flavor. After a while in pleasure, the Dominican filler will flatter the aficionado's palate with wonderful spicy and leather aromas and unite it with the wooden sweetness from Ecuador. Try Adventura the Explorer. Explore a wonderful experience. Welcome back to the Primetime Show. Just the last uh, thing I'll put out there. If you want to get in on the A.J. Fernandez New World Humidor ordered by A.J. Fernandez, Guess how many caps Don Williams, AJ uh, Cigar Rep, has in his collection. If you don't know Don, he has a lot. So put a high number in there would be our guess. Uh, as Aaron said, two digits won't cut it. And I'm going to validate that answer with Don tomorrow. And tag AJ Fernandez. And, ta- and tag AJ Fernandez, Fernandez, please. Yeah. So, uh, you know, if you want to guess again, I'll take the highest number. But it's, I have to have that tag in there so I can kind of pull them out. So AJ, hashtag AJ Fernandez. All right, Aaron, um, big day today. It's the article I look forward to, one of the most articles I put out, like you put out every year that I look forward to. Um, uh, the when a 90 is not a 90. So I'll kind of yes. turn this over to you for folks who may not be familiar with this concept. Talk about what this concept is. So um, just in my reading of reviews, um, I had always kind of felt that there was a bit of scoring inflation going on and seeing a lot of, you know, high scores given out for cigar reviews and things like that based on, you know, from many different sites. And, um, you know, I think, I think we've all been kind of programmed at some point to, to believe like that, that 90 score was, um, you know, the kind of the, the tipping point when you should start paying attention to a cigar. Um, you know, the high 80s are, you know, good cigars, but when you get to 90, it's, you know, a bit more of a special cigar and the higher up you go, um, even better. But um, started seeing like a lot of 90s and, and above there. And I wanted to just kind of get a feeling for if, you know, those cigars that were getting 90s or above, like, is that, st- was that still the the tipping point of when you should kind of pay a bit more of attention and uh, I just wanted to actually put data together to see if I can prove to myself one way or another if that was true or not true. Uh, so in the initial uh, article, um, I went back and I did, uh, I pulled three years worth of data uh, from all the sites that I included in the article. Um, and then that, that was initially published in, in 2017. So it was uh, like 2015, 2016, 2017 data. And um, it was pretty interesting, you know, seeing how the various sites kind of 
uh, scored cigars, you know, based on what their average was and what their most frequent scores given were. Um, so when I kind of collected that data, I thought it was interesting enough that it would make a good article and people would find it interesting. So we kind of published that and uh, I followed that up every year since then where I've collected the next year's worth of data and kind of added that in and compared it to previous years and things like that. So you can kind of see if there's a trend with the site, if that's, you know, if they kind of stay consistent from year to year, um, if there's a bit of, uh, you know, increase going on from, from year to year and things like that. And yeah, the, the graphic you're showing now, um, it shows a breakdown basically um, the first, the first line is the kind of that three year uh, window that I initially pulled and then the three subsequent years from that. Um, so you can kind of see from each site how those numbers look in regards to what their average is and what their most frequent score is given. So um, to me, looking at actual data and kind of proving what what is happening uh, is is fascinating. So uh, and I just, you know, I kind of do it for myself, but I think if other people find it interesting, they can they can read through it and see. But uh, you know, it's 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 a fun thing for me to do every year now. Yeah, I uh, and just you know, Cigar Coop is a part of this evaluation, but I have yep. no influence on what Aaron Aaron pulls the data. He he's, I give him the access to the data. It's out there on Coop, and he pulls it, and he can write whatever he wants about this. Uh, he has I've never, uh, you know, he's always been candid, and we'll get into a lot of that tonight too. Um, and I've always said I've been very fascinated with the data. Here yeah, this, was a, this covers sites that use the 100, the 100 point scoring system. Yeah. Um, there's other sites that use other, you know, they use uh, maybe a five point scale or, and things like that. I just didn't put that in there because it's hard to make a comparison between them. Um, it doesn't include all the sites that um, are on the 100 point system. Like there's some of the magazines that um, that do it, but they don't have the data online. So it's not easy for me to pull. Um, I'm not going to go through like magazines and try to pull the data and things like that. Um, and then there's some other sites that, um, you know, they'll, they do score on the hundred point system, but there's times where they score like in halves and times where they just don't give a score. And I've just, I've just, you know, cut them out because it's just that they don't provide the, the consistent data that I, I want to be able to have in this article. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've always been very interested in this. Now there was a big observation that I took out of this for this year. That was a, I think it was a, it wasn't necessarily something that you saw in the graphs here. It, it, we've talked a lot about the traditional online media written blogs versus now the newer YouTubers coming in and the podcasters coming in doing this. That doesn't reflect, this is strictly on the traditional blogs. Correct. And we we talked a lot about, particularly when we did the consensus with Charlie, that that shift has started to happen in the last couple of years, especially over the last year where we saw that shift going to the, uh, the YouTube, like on the, on the data he's compiling for the consensus. Um, and Charlie doesn't necessarily discriminate if it's an, he doesn't, it doesn't matter the scoring system. He looks at the ranking at the end of the year. But yeah. what I noticed this year was a decline in reviews on several sites that I, I, the number, um, yeah, the I quantity think, of reviews they do over the year. Yeah. Yeah. One of them was a, a brand you had last year that you pulled off was the, how about that cigar? There just wasn't enough data right. to compile. Um, yep. you said there was like a dozen reviews or something like that. Mm -hmm. The other one, and you know, Eric's a friend of mine, dojo site had a decrease this year too. Um, yeah. which surprised me because he's got one of the bigger review teams out there. Mm hmm. That was a surprise, and I, I, I was wondering about that. I didn't look at Blind Man's Puff if they had a decline in reviews. Was there a decline on them? Because they've been one. I don't that... think it was significant. I don't think it was significant. Yeah, it, uh, there, there, it might have been a small drop, but it's they've been pretty consistent in the quantity. It seemed like aficionado went up a bit. I, I think that their insiders have definitely held uh, a higher quantity this year. Yeah, it seemed like yeah. And I would say I was almost the same. I think I don't know. I don't know what uh, half wheel seemed almost like they were the same. I don't really see a, a dip in that. Yeah, uh, Cigar Authority was down. Cigar Authority was way down, which yeah. I want to get into with that when we get into some of the numbers. Uh, they were down a lot. And I'm kind of trying to figure out why it was down so much because I would think 
as a they're the retail site that's in here that yeah. you would want more with everything going on right now. So because that they I mean, look, a retail sites using that to sell cigars, you know, so that one surprised me of the, the drop off with Cigar Authority as well. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, what other observations did you take away from this year? Uh, there was a fair amount of inflation again this year. Um, you know, uh, there's a few sites that kind of dropped down a little bit, but they were like, you know, slight variances, which you could just normally, you know, expect uh, year over year. Uh, but there were some sites that just kind of went up. So, um, and I, I find that odd. I feel like the quality of the cigars have gone down the last two or three years. Um, so to me, I would think that the trend for the averages would go down. Uh, but for some sites, that wasn't the case. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, I, I agree with that um, as well. Um, because, and I'll talk about the coop data a little bit when we get into that um, as well, because that was an interesting statistic. Um, let me, let me, let's kind of go through these by, um, by the, the eight that you had, eight that you did this year. Okay. All right. Um, and I'm going to share this again. So, Cigar Aficionado, I would say, has been pretty consistent uh, with their average scores yes. over the years. Um, yep. There's that one 2017 year where they were a little higher. But if you normalize it, they're in that 89 to 89.1 range most of the time. Yeah. Pretty close. 2018 may be a little anomaly. I mean, but they were, this graph may look like there's big variances. But in reality, when you fractionalize the scores, they're really not. So they've, they've kind of continually done that. They have a, I would say, a pure curve. You look they at have a, cur They have a true, they have really have a true bell curve. Like they that's have a true what, bell curve. That's yeah. what the graph should look like for yeah. all the sites. Right. So, you know, I, I haven't really seen any changes happen with that one, um, which is, which is interesting. Um, so I would say that, you know, they're kind of just doing their thing right now. Little down from last year, but again, statistically, they're, they're on target there as well. And I don't know if that will yeah. change over the years or not. Um, sometimes I wonder about that one because there has been a, I think, a decrease in, in some of the quality. But I think they review a lot of older cigars, mm -hmm. and that may kind of make up for some of that. Yeah, I would agree yeah. with you on that. Yeah. All right. Blind Man's Puff. We'll go to them next. Um, this is a site you you had. Um, Dave, in the last three years, have, have kind of had an, an increase in that. Yeah. They've got a little bit. They came down a little this year. Yeah, but you, know, you see from 17 to 18, there was a big, you know, there was uh, quite over half a point jump. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, you know, a quarter of a point, over a quarter of a point from 18 to 19. So there definitely has been some inflation there. Um, and then there was, a, a, you know, a slight dip um this year yeah um they i think the i kind of will infer from that in the last couple of years maybe the last three years they have brought a lot of reviewers on um yep. so they are bringing in a, there's a lot of panelists that they bring in there and i think in you know the what i've inferred and we whether they're reviewing blind or not the new a newer reviewer will tend to score it higher Correct. Yeah, so I think that's what you're seeing there with that. Um, how they, how is you, how did you rate the distribution of scores? I mean, because that's yeah, that's I mean, always a big thing. Obviously, the bell. Yeah, the bell's heavy on the high side, so you could see, you know, 90s that frequent score, and you should yeah. have an even distribution on each of the sides. Um, but it's quite heavy on that on the high side. So when you know, when 92 and 90, 91, 92 hit higher than you know, 89. Yeah. That's where you get kind of that higher scoring side. Yeah. So I would, I would infer with that as well. Um, and then last year was like, a, they had a big one. They were over the 91 mark. When I, I look at that in general, I've tried, and I get into mine. I tried to calibrate a couple of years ago at 90 as a, as a, what I call the standard of excellence. Right. Um, and there were certain things that if the cigar performs in a category, you will not get a 90. That's kind of how I looked at that. Um, but we've talked a lot about this on previous shows. You know, today it's looked on, you know, we, we've talked about a lot. 90s looked about as a participation trophy in a lot of cases. Yeah. 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 Um, they did have with, a lot of, with, yeah. 
with this site, um, the, obviously I have a lot more insight into this because I was part of you right. know, the whole put together of things in, right. in the initial phases. But the the weighting of the scoring is um, off in their system. Um, if you take the flavor categories and you know combine that total of the weighting versus the you know pre light and construction um, and the overall rating, uh, those all weigh heavier than the flavor does. So you know, well-constructed cigars can get a boost in that area. So mm -hmm. um, to me, they have a couple of things they need to fix. One is they need to fix the the weighting of the scoring system. And they also need to, I think, uh, have a little bit more of an education with the reviewers on you know, on the proper way to, to score. I think. Right. I've always got a little confused how the overall score is calculated there still. I, I kind of, I mean, I know it's an algorithm, but I never quite understood it. Yeah, I mean, it's just a, it's just their thoughts on the ex the experience as a whole, and then the weighting of that is fairly significant into this the overall score of it. Yeah. All right. Coop's up next. Dojo. Oh yeah, you're up. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's hanging. <laughs> so um, while it's hanging, um. So an interesting observation I'll make while it's loading is um, Coop, I did not make any algorithm changes this year. So a lot of the cigars that I reviewed were, were kind of reviewed the same way as, um, as last year went. Okay. So okay. While it's coming up. I'm going to try to bring up another tab and see what happens, but it, it, it's thinking there. So a um, couple of takeaways that you made on that with me were um, now I kind of mashed it here. The, um, the big, the big critique you had on me, and I think it's a, an absolute fair critique is um, the range. Yeah. The range. So, um, kind of a very narrow range. I would say if you looked at it, 87 to 92, it was not a wide range at all. Right. Um, so I think that's a very fair, fair critique there. So, um, what's happening there? Yeah, you, you want to be able to, um, see a differentiation between all the reviews to know, uh, what the difference is between, you know, various cigars. Um, if everything's re in, really in that close range, it's hard to tell. Like, you have so many that score these same scores, you know, that there's not a differentiation between them. And you would say, all right, out of all these 91s, you know, which one is the better out of the 91s? And there's got to be some sort of a difference in there, but it's hard to hard to tell when you know that that narrow of a range there. So, so here's where, um, yeah. So here's what I I saw happen this year, um. I didn't see a lot of I there was not a cigar I had this year that scored a 93 over over 92. I think this year the the dip that Coop had um was because that reflected that quality end on the high end. That's mm -hmm. kind of where I'm going to kind of take that one and um and go with that. That's kind of where I'm I'm leaning towards with that. I don't know um you know, that's that's my inference on that. I did have some things on the lower end of things. It looks like it's the developing palette site that's hold it's hung for whatever reason. Everyone, you up? Yeah, it's hanging me up because everything else is in there. But um yeah. The uh but that's kind of what's can, I can always share it. If yeah, if you want to share it, go ahead. It could be it could be on my end. The uh the gerbils aren't working. Um so let me see. I may have I think you could share. Yeah, let's see if I can do it. So I do want to have the numbers nope, up. I can't there. do it since it's disabled for only the host. Oh, well, let me see if I could do that. Try this out again. I mean, I'm able to bump, bump around in there. But. Okay. Let me bring it up in. Um, I'll bring it up in the other browser here. Um, yeah. So I think that's what happened on my end. Certainly, I need to do a better job at um, at that range thing. I think I've uh, maybe I'm not inflating the scores, but um, am I reviewing enough cigars? That's the other thing. Am I reviewing enough cigars that on the lower end? You know, this came up in our chat today um, about reviewing a cigar that was like a dud. Like there was yeah. once there was one cigar that was a dud today. Um, 
And do we go back and review that cigar? I think I got it here. It is the question here. Um, because that's something I think that uh, it's working now. Okay. So hopefully, yeah. So I'm wondering if that's something where, you know, a lot of times, you know, there's, it's painful sometimes to um, review a cigar that sucks, right? Yep. So, so there was one cigar today that we talked about that sucked. And, like, I didn't review it, but I smoked it. But do I go back and review right. it? I think the answer is I have to. If I smoked it once, yep. I think I have to put it in the queue to go back and review it. So those are some things that may, may tweak the range a bit there. Um, but I did have a drop this year, uh, which was – yeah. My goal is to get that below the 89 at some right. point, which I think is kind of like what I look for and have a better bell curve. Like I have yeah. my curve is if you look at this, it's still top heavy. Yeah. Um, I was surprised. I hadn't looked at the mode scores, but the mode came out. Uh, there was over 50 with a 90. I'm like, that's that was more than I thought. I hadn't really looked at the data yeah. with that. <laughs> so, yeah, I think it's a fair thing. Certainly, I had more 87, 88s that kind of pulled that that pulled that average down a bit this year. But I think it's right. a total fair thing with that. Um, I, I did not make any changes to the algorithm for 2021. So mm -hmm. it'll be interesting to see now. But I do have this kind of you've given me this feedback, so to speak, which is good. Yeah. Um, I, I was going to be worried if my score went up this year. It's, it's not going to be good. <laughs> but yeah. I looked at the first four. It, it was it was really after 2018 where I put some changes in that um, basically. And I basically I'll tell you, I stopped grading on a curve. Uh, and I, I started truncating stuff. Uh, there was a point where if you went back to 2013 with Coop, I guarantee you um, there was a bit of that. Like I had scores. That, I bet you the scores were over 92. I bet you they oh, were. Really? Yeah. So wow. um, I tended to score higher early. I mean, one big thing is because I had the appearance thing in there, which I, I pulled out as a score. I just felt uh, that mm -hmm. was something. So that kind of helped bring that down a bit. And then it was a matter of I really had to assess these categories better. So yeah. I, I agree with most of your comments there uh, that you said as far as that goes. I did review about the same amount of cigars as last year. It was about 172. Right. I think I was 173 last year. Um, so I was planning on reducing it to about 150 to 160 this year, but COVID, uh, changed some of the PCA coverage and all that. So sure. there were more reviews done during the summer. All right. No one wants to hear about my site anyway. So we got to get, <laughs> all right, let's get to dojo. Um, the big surprise was he had an up, he bumped up this year from last yeah. year yeah. slightly, but not, you know, it was still a bump up. Right. Um, they definitely made some changes after 2017, 2018, where they tightened up the scoring. Yeah. 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 They had a few 82 and 84s in there. I thought they had something below an 80 this year. It's possible that it was something below an 80. Um, I just have to cut the the graph at a point. So it yeah. would throw it into the 82. Yeah. So anything below, anything 82 or below all falls under the 82 category on the yeah. graph. So um, there's only one review in there. So it may not be an 82. It may be something that's even lower than that. And it just classifies it as an 82 in this graph. Yeah, I, I think it might have been the, the Drew Estate factory smoke. I, I may be wrong. Okay. I could have been last year, but I thought they had a couple in there. But but this was the big one that I was really surprised at. First of all, look at the number of scores. Like compared yeah. to the coupe one, these numbers were up at 50 for the coupe, right? We were in the 50 for right. my 90. They're not even at 10 for the 90. And yeah. 91 was the, the, the surprisingly higher one. Yeah. Um, so this is a really weird, really weird, weird, cur weird curve. Like, yeah. the curve almost looks like it, you know, it has that peak, like, at the 88.5 kind of range. But then you have that big spike at 91, which kind of throws things off quite a bit. So, yeah, it's a – and I think this kind of goes into the, in the, in the um, range of reviewers that they have. I know that Jordan does the most of the reviews on the site, but you know, you have these other people that are yeah. mixed in there and when you don't have kind of consistency through the reviewers and the, and the number of re reviews that they do, you are going to get something like this. Yeah. Bear who reviews for them is a low scorer. I mean, I'll tell you that he is, right. he does not re give a lot of nine. If, he may give one or two nineties out a year. I want to say he does about yeah. eight to 10 reviews a year. It could be a little more, but but yet, it, but there's a big decrease in these numbers. And the one thing that I'm kind of curious about 
is when they get the cigar of the year, I know they don't base it on, on the, having a review out there, which that's something I disagree right. with. I think you got to review the cigar. I think you got to have, I use the regular season. That's the regular season. And then this is the playoffs. Yeah. So I know that's, and I go back last year. I still scratch my head how sober Mesa Boulay made that list at or the score. that was like 88. I, I didn't, I still don't understand that. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, that may no. be because of the community thing, but I think still, you, my opinion is you got to cut it off at some point. But I don't know how they do it this year, the yeah. cutoff, because I don't know how you do it. They didn't have a lot of reviews this year. Yeah. And they, they review, I mean, I like, I like they put a lot of effort into their reviews, too. There's a lot of good uh, yes. photography they do. They, they do. I know Bear puts a lot of hours when he does these. So, I mean, they do work hard on their reviews. I'd like to see more of them, actually. Yeah, but this was a strange one. This was a complete strange one. That curve is like, I don't know what to make of that curve. It kind of bounced. It was almost like the ninety was down. You know, you don't normally don't see that. And that ninety one surprised me. Yeah. Uh, all right. Who is next? Half wheel. I think it's half wheel. Yeah. Half wheel. Um, I have to look at last year's. They it used to be it seemed like 80, 86, 87, 88 were the higher scores they used to have. They seem like they went a little to the right this year. Even though their yeah. average score wasn't much, they still seem like they there were a lot more higher scores I saw from half wheel this year, which surprised yeah. me. You know, they do have some you know, they're one of the few sites that do um you know, a wide range of scores. So you, they always do a good job with that. that. There's a bunch that are in the, there's a, but you know, there's a fair number that are in the seventies and that definitely helps with the average. Um, but, uh, yeah, they have, a, they also have a weird kind of a bell thing going on with the 88 and the nineties being so close with yeah, the drop but you, in the 89s. But there was that drop off in 2017 and 18. And then they've kind of bounced back to the 2016 levels. Um, yeah. I mean, I think it's safe to say they've 86, 87, but, but I was still surprised this year. There were a lot more things 89 and uh, 90 and above this year than, than in previous years. Yeah. So um, they're kind of a shifted bell curve too. Right. Unless you count, you know, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of outliers in there too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, but they, but I think they've, they've consistently, uh, had a you know they've had a wide they probably have the widest range of anybody. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean I think that's safe to say they're not afraid to give something below an eighty. Uh, but there's not a lot they of them. A, I mean, yeah, and they uh you know when they're in their cigar of the year they go uh you know ninety ones and above qualify. Yeah. Uh, they have quite a few number of those cigars that are now like kind of in that tournament uh, at the end of the year. So. Yeah, it looked like last year. I remember we were talking about they didn't have as many. I mean, we were actually wondering yeah. about that. Um, yeah. And but look at the again. If you look at the number of scores, it's significantly higher than what Dojo had. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying it, it. When you look at that drop off, the drop off was very evident with with the Dojo ones. The average right. score still came out relatively consistent. There's not wide ranges mm -hmm. of that. So I don't know. You know, and, and it, I kind of go back. We've said the last two years have been weaker years. The coop numbers have gone down. They've kind of gone up, so I don't know. What, what I don't know. I I don't know how to assess it. Maybe other than they just they just felt there were better cigars. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We're getting to the good one. Cigar <laughs> Authority. Yes. Barry cracks the ninety three mark this year. Yeah. But he's his, he yeah. is consistently increasing. That's the one he thing can say about he that. He has increased four, he has increased five years. Actually, he wasn't no, he increased every year. Yeah. Every year he's increased. That went from a ninety one point two nine to ninety three point oh five in a matter of a five year span. Um, they're the one site that does their retailer. Yeah. This is the observation I'm going to take that I've seen. There's a couple things going on here. When Barry joined Cigar Authority in 2015. It seemed like he was reviewing more cigars that weren't being sold in the store. Okay. Um, there was cigar. I know he was. There was cigars that they didn't carry that he was reviewing, but mm -hmm. ultimately, you know, it, it's a, look. I always say he's in a tough position. He's got to be a reviewer, but you know, look. The argument is, you know, he's working for a retailer, and um, I don't know if that. I don't know how much that plays into it. 
but he's reviewing the cigars that the store is carrying and the store is behind. So yeah. I think you, you see some of that as well. But um, this, yeah, this was, this was really interesting. The amount of, um, there were, you know, there's a couple of 98 and 100 scores. There was another 100 score today. Yeah. Which I thought was like, wow. <laughs> and then, you know. <laughs> Perfect timing. <laughs> yeah. So, so we've, you've joked the last few years about him going over the 100 mark. He actually joked about that in the review today. Okay. About going over 100. He thought it was going to 102. It was a Byron in there. Uh, yeah. You know what my feelings are on 100 point scores? The cigar's got to be perfect every time. So yeah, I, I the, you'll never see. Like, the idea is if something's a 90, it's 90% of perfection. You know, so there's still a gap. Right, right. But there, there's a, I mean, his average score is higher than my highest score. Yeah. So that, that's like, wow. I mean, and here's the other thing that's very interesting. There is nothing below an 89. There's only like, Correct. I think there's only three cigars. On it. It looks like there's three cigars. Yeah. That's, a, yeah. that's, yeah, that's, I don't see that indicative of what's been in the market this year. Right. I would agree with that. So, um, I don't know. I mean, it's, you know, it, but that, that's a, the increase surprised me even that much. Um, to hit, to, to hit the 93 threshold, I don't think that's good. That's just my opinion. Um, yeah. But, you know, again, it's, you know, I, there's effort put in, in these reviews. So I don't want to I don't want to knock anybody. But, uh, you know, this is where there was an argument on, on my Facebook thing today where someone said, well, this kind of goes back to what you said. When is a 90 and 90? And it's different to every people. I mean, in this case, the 90 yeah. is like a consolation prize. Mine, it's like exactly. an average. And in some cases, some people it's above average. So, I mean, this is where the whole argument comes with, and it's really kind of shown with this. Yep. Yeah. What was your, any other yeah, observations? If you, look at, if you look at the scores, yeah, if you look at the scores, I mean, you have to think like, if you get below it, you know, if you get below a 92, you know, then you, you miss the boat based on his, his classification. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's just so heavily weighted, ninety-two and above. Um, you know, you if you're trying to compare it to other sites, like you, you gotta like knock off like three points right off the bat. Yeah, just to try to get some sort of a semblance of how to match it up with other sites. When Barry had a cigar smoker, I always liked his top list of the year. I always thought he did a really good mm -hmm. job. At he did score higher even back on a cigar smoker. I'll say. But I always thought when it came to his end of the year list, he he really did a good job with that. I I just wish he they'd give him that opportunity to maybe give his best cigars of the year, independent of right. the, the way uh, two guys in cigar authorities doing that. I would just like to see that, um, sure. just for my own curiosity. Um, yeah, you know. But I always listen to what they do with with theirs, and and they it still always to me it still comes down to what's the best selling cigars. Is what I see. Yeah, I'm I'm dead set against that because you could have a movie, a horrible movie, gross two hundred million dollars. So I never understood yeah, exactly. like how that that goes in there. So you know, I, I'm saying if you're gonna have sell, do it. Remember what Jeff did a couple years ago? He put his best selling cigars out there, and I always thought that was yep. very interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the two guys listed the cigars already. Um, they get a lot of they get a lot of airplay with their cigar of the year thing. So. It's yeah, a big yeah, show yeah. for them. And a lot of people and a lot of people buy those samplers. Um, I mm -hmm. can tell you, I've had a, several people ping me on some of the cigars in there. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean they do, but it's a, definitely I, I definitely a higher score. I don't like seeing that above ninety three. That's for sure. Yeah. All right. All right. The next one I think is Tim. Yeah. This is the most interesting one that that uh, I keep saying that about everyone. So let's look at that 2018 number. I remember yep. in 2017, you made some comments about Tim scoring on the higher side. He made some adjustments in 2018. Kind of said, right. yeah, I am scoring a little too high. But in the last two years, he's gone higher than, <laughs> than he than, was before. Than he was before. And I like Tim. He's a good guy. Uh, yeah. I like I, me and him actually message. We compare you know, which cigars we like and stuff like that. He, he's a, I like him a lot. Um, so this is not a knock on him, but he definitely has gone high. This was his highest year. Yeah. Uh, he was up in, uh, he actually, was, he finished in second place this year, which right. we'll talk about who he passed this year. 
I'm not sure what to make of that. I mean, um, yeah, I don't really, I don't really understand. So, and look at look at his highest one, ninety four. Oh, a lot of ninety fours in there. Yeah. And I go back again. That his average and his high, I didn't have anything above a ninety two this year. Mm -hmm. So, um. He had about he had about looks like he had nine ninety sixes this year. Yeah. Well, that's, high, that's some high high scoring. Yeah, I thought like in two thousand eighteen with the adjustments he made, he, he was more among the norm. And I was like, maybe that will go. Maybe he'll crack below eighty nine. It to me, it well, again what we've seen. He reviews a lot of new stuff. I don't yep. see the newer stuff. Like I said, there was nothing I could say is a ninety three this year. There were some very good ninety tie ninety twos in my book, but that, again, that's me. But I didn't see any like that. Surprised this surprised me as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And last but not is one more, right? Yeah, there's one more. All right, all right. Here, and this is uh, you've only had him on for three years. Boston Jimmy. Yeah, he only started scoring in 2018. Yep. So he had a big drop this year. He did mm -hmm. make some changes. With his scores yeah. and and I think the changes he made, we can debate on his system, but he widened his range. It looked like this year for sure. Yeah, yeah. Which which actually he fell to he was always the one like last year he was kind of neck and neck with Barry. This year he kind of fell right. to ninety one point six six. Uh, that's a that's a decent sized drop. Um, as well, he had a lot of I he had a lot of ninety fives in there too. <laughs> um. He didn't have any 99s or 100s this year. So he made some changes. That, But what he did, he knocked two points, I think, off the – like he has a threshold. Mm -hmm. And then there's like bonus and subtractions off that threshold. I think he knocked it down from 96 to 94. Yeah, um, I think you're correct. Which, so he lost about a point, almost 1.7, 1.8 points with that. So I think that's what you're seeing there. But it did widen his – like there was a few – I was surprised how many things below – like he had – it looked like about 30 scores uh, below 90 this year. Yeah. Well, that's kind of, that was kind of interesting as well with that. Yeah, it's not, a, it's not a good flow for that bell there. You know, there's a lot of uh, – kind of just being all over the place with these with these scores. But, yeah. you know, based on the scoring system, maybe, you know, that may just be the the way it works. But, yeah, um, yeah it's just a little odd. Yeah. So, yeah, I thought it was odd, too. But he has been pretty consistent, I think, with his reviews. Um, I don't know what the total number is. It looks like he's around 100, if I had a look at this, maybe a little under it, which is a healthy number. But, he, but here's the thing. He's doing three lists this year. So, yeah. Here's where I question it is if you have about 100 cigars and you're going to have three lists of 15, that's 45 cigars. Yeah, right? you're almost halfway. Everything here is going to end on a list. Like if you yeah. look at it, that's what I'm looking at. Right. So it's a, it's a lot. Uh, 30, is, you know, if I redo, there's a point where I've always done 30 because it was the original way I did a countdown for the month. There may be a point I reduce it to 25 if the review numbers go down. It's just I, you're going to get too high a percentage. Then you're going to have inferior cigars in there. So yep. um, I'm curious to see how he does does that list this year. I'm, I'm kind of curious mm -hmm. about that. So those are that's the review of that um, as well. And, that, um, and uh, like I said, there were a couple. Cigar Smoke was the other one who was knocked off. Um, yeah in there as well and then this is this is the final this is kind of the tail of the tape here yeah so this is just a ranking from low to high for the averages and then low to high for the most frequent scores that they that each site gave so you can kind of compare them all across the board and kind of get a feel but you could see you know um there's a huge gap from the you know the low to the high so if you're you know if you're trying to you know compare us a similar cigar between multiple sites it's not that easy to do. Like, no. um, I, I, I guess you could almost, I could, you know, you could almost create an algorithm that would tell you, uh, you know, how to compare the cigar between the sites, you know, with pluses and minuses for each, you know, depending on the site yeah. and things like that to see how they match up. But, um, yeah. 
you know, but it's but tough you, if you go from an 87 to a 93, you had a six point gap, you know? Yeah. There's a, you know, and this was one of the arguments. It was a uh, Jay uh, Caraway, who uh, I know him for a long time, coffee guy. And he, he makes some valid points. You know, I kind of, so one thing is I do like the fact that there's individuality with, with these sites. Yeah. So I think there has to be a level. Like if you look at, for example, Boston, Jimmy, his cigars are almost the majority of his points are based on construction. It's a very heavy yeah. construction site. Um, I would say if you look at Half Wheel, Coop's gone much more with flavor in the last couple of years since I made some changes with that. Uh, obviously, developing pounce is all flavor, pretty much, uh, for the yeah. most part. Um, yeah, we look at that. And, and, and Cigar Authority, like I said, there's the sales aspect of that thing with that. Yeah. Uh, so that's that was kind of a review. I'm, like I said, the big takeaway I took I'm concerned about the lesser reviews we're seeing out here. That's yeah. the part I'm concerned about. Yeah. Or are you going to do something like you did last year with developing pallets? Like yeah, go of... back. Go back, uh, and it's the bottom graph. Oh, wait. Did I miss that? How did I miss that? I completely... Oh, here it is. I did miss this. Okay, so you did have this. So here, here is the developing pallets. Yeah, and so this is different than the other ones because we don't use a 100-point system, um, and uh, we don't do a single score per review. We score per re reviewer, and all four of us are in the same review. So we basically have broke it down by reviewer um, over the last four years. So you can kind of see how what the trends are with each person uh, on the site. So um, for pretty much everybody except for Seth, um, it's been a down, you know, been a downward trend um, the last um, you know two years at least. So, and that's, were, you know, what, yeah. that's what we've seen. Um, there were some cigars that Seth really liked this year, but yeah, there were some cigars he hated as well. Yeah. 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 Um, I think yours is the biggest, you know, obviously yours is the last two years. You haven't even averaged the six. Yep. Uh, yeah. And, but I would say, yeah, John's gone down. So John's been on the fence of, um, not the fence, but he's been, and like kind of agreeing with us has been a decline for the most part. I think June June had a big drop this year. June yeah. I think had the biggest drop this year. Yep. Very interesting with that. But you're consistently downward. John's consistently yeah. downward. June almost sets until this year. Yeah. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh but yeah, I'm looking. There's no one who had above. There's no one who had six two this year. Uh, Seth was six three five, so he was a little bit above. Oh, yeah. Seth, I'm sorry. Yeah, Seth is. I'm looking at the wrong color. Yeah, Seth is six yeah. three five. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. I mean, so I've always known Seth scores a little higher than than the other yeah. guys. Uh, yeah. June also scores a little higher. You score. Yeah. You're you're the most stringent. And then John's kind of close to that. Yeah. Wow. But I mean, so is there, so, so there's going to be cigars like when you kind of submit your top 25 or whatever so for the final, you're probably gonna have a lot of cigars under six on that list. Yeah. And this year we're not, we're doing a singular list, so it's not going to be individual lists. Um, and you won't, you know, you won't really see a score attached to this, the, the, rankings it's just gonna be a rank you know one through 25 but yeah. um you know it's, a, it's an in, interesting internal discussion about like you know you know the list has typically been you know top 25 um but do you you know there's a debate of do you set a threshold and say if cigars don't get around this kind of a score like do you just say all right well, we, can, well, we can only come up with 14 cigars that um you know were were worthy of being on a list, but yeah. I, my opinion is, no, it's top twenty-five of the year, regardless of how good or how bad they are. Right, it's just the top twenty-five. So, yeah, we've um, we've had. I know we have discussion. We were just talked about this earlier. <coughs> Half wheel, I think, does a very interesting way of of how they do it. I think when there's a cigar above ninety-one, they get the cigar to the other people. Yeah, the smoke. Yep. Dojo and Blind Man's Puff don't do that. Right. What do you guys do with the cases? Because there are some cigars that not everyone has smoked. How do you guys handle that? 
for 2020, uh, we made it a point that uh, all 2020 reviews would be smoked by all four people. So there's okay. not a single 2020 release that we reviewed this year that did not have all four people on it. So anything we saw with, without all four people was a 2019 release. Correct. Okay, got it. Got it. Or there is there is there is actually one cigar that did not have all four people. It was just two people, and that cigar just doesn't qualify for. Um, and it, based on the two reviews, it wouldn't have made it on the top twenty-five anyway. So. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, we needed we needed to find a way that we can do it um, consistently and not like drop cigars out just because we couldn't all do it. So we before the year started, we said, you know, we want to do it this way to make it to make it uh, done correctly. Can we all agree that we'll do that? And that was the agreement and we stuck to it the whole year. And that's kind of how we're going to go moving forward as well. I like that. I think that change is going to help you guys a lot. I, I think it's a good yeah. change to make. Um, and it will give you guys one. It will give you a site brand of stronger name in the consensus. Yep. You'll have a stronger percentage because right. it was a split. Every time it was split with four, so you kind of like Charlie gives equal weight to every site. So if there's four lists, he's going to divide it by four. So I, I think yep. that was was very very good as well. I mean, I'll tell you the. I think we could. We're going to probably talk about this over the next few weeks. The two front runners for consensus on my initial data analysis, that, and I've gone through some YouTube sites. I think it's going to be Sober Mesa Brulee Blue and Mill DS. Yep. Yeah, I would agree with those. I think those two, are gonna. I think runners. that's your one two right now, and and we'll see what happens when the lists come out. But but I looked at what was reviewed on a lot of sites. I mean, you guys didn't review the Mill DS yet, did you? Uh, we've reviewed it. It just has not published yet. Okay, so you guys have something coming. Yeah, mine's gonna be next yeah. for next year. So yeah, those. Are, but I'm seeing those cigars. I think Nick Malillo may sneak sneak up higher in there. Yeah. Uh, I think Aladino Cameroon is gonna be up there, but I don't think it, I don't think those two are going to contend for number one by any means. So right. I think right now, if I had to put my, my money on it, it's soccer is going to win this thing. And by the way, I think soccer could still sneak on with tricky tracker. There were a lot of tricky tracker reviews out this year. Yeah. yeah. So, so don't be surprised, but I think soccer is, is my favorite. Mil Diaz is probably going to be that number two. Yeah. Uh, I've only got it right once. I think I've only got it. No, I got it. I got it right once. Like at, at the gate and what was, that was wise man a few years ago. Yeah. When's the, when's the developing palettes list spent, uh, published? Uh, the list is going to publish on, let me see if I can pull up my calendar here. It will go, I think January 20th, I think will be the date. Okay. So yeah, you guys got, you so, guys got some time. The, yeah. the other thing that I've always, I, I went back and look at your list uh, this past week. And I noticed a lot of changes because of the 2019 cigars that were reviewed after the deadline. And there were a lot of changes on your list. I saw some cigars yeah. bounce up. And now, what's going to happen with with this year? Is it going to be um, something similar, or is it a final? Well, vote? we have everything that we have from 2019, except for or out of, from 2020, except for one cigar that we just recently got. Um, we will have all the cigars reviewed before the list comes out. Okay. So they may not be published, but the data is complete. Right. So we'll uh, and that will be there. And I don't know that we're in the way we're doing the list this year is we're doing it from January. This year will be <coughs> January one to October thirty first. We'll be qualified for the twenty twenty list, mm -hmm. and then going forward, it will be November first to October thirty first. Will be for the next year. So um, everything that we have in that January 1st to October 31st range will have already be, been done. And we're probably not going to mix in any more 2020 uh, releases from before that October 31st date. So it'll, there'll be some, there'll be November and December stuff, but that's for the next year's list. So the list shouldn't change uh, that much. I don't know that we're going to go back to very many uh, other 2020 releases after the fact. So you guys will be on the same review schedule as me. My review schedule is November first, October thirty first. But the difference yep. I have is the release. The release date goes back to IPCPR. So, right. and I think, and I, and I think you're going to see that's going to help you guys because it, it that crunch at the end of the year is just it doesn't do any good. And if you wind up in a hospital, your list will will basically be. Uh, invalidated like what happened to me yeah so. and one of the things that we wanted to try to get away from was the possibility of publishing the list naming somebody as a cigar of the year 
and then something else comes in and scores really well and takes over the number one spot. Yeah. And then you're telling somebody you lost the number one spot. Uh, so we're trying to cap it so that we're kind of done, done without any changes after the fact. Yep. I think that's a smart move too, uh, because that does carry a lot of visibility. Yeah. With a number one, you'll start seeing the shelf talkers made and stuff like that. No. So, uh, I always wondered what would happen with that. Yeah. L- luckily it never occurred. And now hopefully we've kind of nipped that in the butt. So there's no chance of that happening. So, yeah, no, I, I think so too. Now the 20th, that will get you in for the consensus, right? I think Charlie says we have yeah, Charlie said his deadline. I checked in with Charlie cause I wanted to find out. Um, and I just happened to check in with him the day, like the day before he said that he's going to publish the schedule. Um, and he had, when he told me that he was pushed in the list back, um, I was happy because we want to go as late as we can. Um, so yeah, we're gonna we're we're always gonna kind of toe that line to as close to the end as possible so that we have more time to get the reviews done. Yeah, I um, you know, I I think that's a good move. Is I think there's a lot of people that are pushing as much late in the year as possible right now. So I think he had the yeah. foresight to do that. Um, me, it doesn't change it as much because of my deadline for the release date. So it makes right. it a little easier, but I do November is like a crazy month for me to smoke. I'll tell you that because there's so much yeah. I'm smoking again the way I do it. So, so I'm gonna be one of the first lists probably to be published because I come out January fourth. Right. So there'll be plenty of time, and it's actually been interesting because I'm not competing with like aficionado this year. Um, yeah. Journal really doesn't impact me one way or another. So I'm having I don't know if anyone else major has published the list yet that i've seen um no uh i think jimmy does his on new year's day or new year's eve new year's day he's doing it new year's eve like at midnight the three list but then he's picking an overall winner of the list which um so he's taking the small medium and large list is what he's doing and then he is um he he puts out the nominees and then he builds he's going to build the three lists uh, so there'll be a ranking, like I believe it's New Year's Eve. And then he's told me there's a show he's doing, uh, taking it to the Nub show, and um, he's going to announce the final winner. You know, the, the last thing what I'll, I'll say is with the YouTubers, and I and I I really feel they should put the list in the comments, in the, in the description. Yeah, um, I would agree with that. I've even told Bear that. I, I Because Bear does his on, on his show. And the only reason why I say that is – People will still watch your video, especially if they see something on there that's that's going to catch their attention. Maybe I should try that cigar. Maybe why is this cigar here? And I think there's more power. I don't think I don't think you need to do the clickbait thing with this. I, I really do think you'll actually get more views on on doing like I've never put clickbait with the coop stuff and the articles every year. One by one yeah. always are like top articles. So, I mean. And I'll say my numbers are up yeah. way this year. On uh, this is for December. December is always the big month for me with IPs. My numbers are really up this year, so mm-hmm. you know it works. Like I said, I you don't have to click my article yeah. to know what the cigar is. Is what I'm saying. So yep, yep. All right, all right. So with that, I think we're done here. Unless there's anything else. Um. Yeah, one last thing is that we have a contest going on over developing palettes, uh, JC Newman Yagua. Uh, that will run until uh, Sunday evening. So if you want a chance to win a five pack of uh, Yaguas, go to developingpalettes.com. There's a banner right on the top where you can click on that. It'll take you to the review and down below the scores, you can see how to enter. So, yep. My JC Newman. Away. Yep. My JC Newman contest ultimate giveaway is closed already. Winner will be announced Monday. Um, I had to go through all the comments to see who's eligible or not. And that's taking a little longer, but I'll announce the winner on Monday. There's not going to be a video or anything. I'm going to kind of keep that off social media just because there's, you know, cigars in there. So um, you'll, yeah. there'll be winners. There'll be three winners announced, the grand prize winner, and then two people will get the uh, JC Newman Brickhouse Calabras. And they have 24 hours. Otherwise, the second place person goes up to first. So, uh, and, and, and et cetera. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Um, yeah. So this is our final primetime show for 2020. Um, we have a jukebox yes. show on Monday. Dave and I are doing. Um, we're going to look at some of the artists who have passed away over the last year, but that's pretty much going to bring the primetime thing to a close for this year. 
Um, we are all booked up already into January, and next week, just confirm not next week, on January 7th, which will be our next show, uh, James Brown will be returning. And I was surprised, Aaron, we had we had him on January 2019. So it's two years since he's been on. Okay. And wow. You know, it's a long time, but there's a lot that I looked at like what happened. There's a lot that he's changed in the last couple of years with Emilio and dissident and stuff like that. So oh, yeah. I think there's a lot to talk about with James uh, on that show. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, that will be. Uh, and then we'll, we have some pretty cool shows for the rest of January. This, uh, I think we'll, you'll be a very set five months. I think February we'll do, I guess, our, our list recap show at some point once consensus comes out. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, and then yeah. we have, of course, you'll be doing the recap for the industry on developing pallets sometime in January. Yeah. So I think it's going to be uh, the day that the actual consensus comes out. Um, so it'll be January 25th or January 26th. I have to look back at what day we're going to do it, but yeah, it'll be right after the consensus comes out. Yep. So that'll be, and Charlie's coming on, right? Yep. Charlie will be on the that'll show. Be all, that'll be awesome. Yeah. Cause last year I know we couldn't get him because of, he usually does the festivals. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we'll look forward to that as well. Um, and then, um, that's it. I think that's it. We're going to, um, put a wrap on 2020 here. Uh, again, thanks to Omar, AJ Fernandez as well. Um, fun show with him. And that's going to wrap up primetime episode 168 into the annals of history for Thursday, December 17th, 2020. Now Friday, December 18th, 2020 on the East coast. Merry Christmas, happy new year, or whatever you're celebrating, stay safe. Uh, and we'll see everybody in 2021. See you guys.